wheel drive did a redesign and I hate it. I know. Yeah. Why? I don't want change. Oh, we got to empty out our storage. And that's the start of this podcast. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Welcome to Not My Fifty Podcast, <laughs> uh, the show where we watch and review and talk about the lore behind our favorite and least favorite fantasy films. I'm Cullen. And I'm Hannah. And today we have uh, my co and one of the top uh, Not My Fantasy fans uh, and uh, cousin by marriage to like Lost of the Woodland Realm, Yeah, Michael Greenleaf. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, now, you're, one of your children is named for a character in a different movie from this company, right? Yes. So my oldest is named Saoirse. I mean, technically, we kind of had her name picked out beforehand. <laughs> but, okay. it, but it uh, so it kind of further reinforced the choice when uh, we watched Song of the Sea. <laughs> So I'm thinking next St. Patrick's Day, we'll have to have you back and we'll watch that one. Like, we'll just yeah. watch one of their movies. Each <laughs> no, no, no. Day. We'll have Saoirse on and she can be your guest. <laughs> I love that. Yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have to check that YouTube box when any children appear in this and be like, <laughs> actually, yes. Yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on. Um, today, we are talking about The Secret of Kells, a 2009 film. Uh by the company Cartoon Saloon. Uh, have we seen this movie before? So I started watching it. <laughs> uh, I think what happened, I can't even remember now. I think we had watched Song of the Sea first, maybe, and then went back to watch Secret of Kells. And I don't remember if it was immediately after or not, but we sort of fell asleep. And then we just never ended up going back to it. Mm. Not that we had anything opposed to it. We just, I think the <laughs> timing and then it just didn't happen. So we saw like the beginning of it, like the very beginning. So this was nice to be able to go back and watch it. Yeah, I had never heard of this movie. I uh, had never heard of, well, frankly, I could not read the opening title cards because I was like, I, I don't know, maybe I was just too tired because I had cleaned my entire house or if just like the text was just, I couldn't. Um, I'm not really in touch with my Celtic side anymore. Um, hence why I did all green eye shadow to make up <laughs> for it. makeup, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, I yeah, when you kept saying, oh, we're doing The Secret of Cows, I was like, no idea what that is. Uh, but I also, like when I started watching it, I was like, this movie looks really, really new. And I figured, but I was like, no, this had to have come out like a long time ago. 2009 did not, that's crazy. How yeah. did I not hear of this? Did this come out? I mean, we'll talk about it, but theatrical release or was it? I think it was probably, it might've been slightly limited. I think it actually select. was more popular in the US than Ireland, but it was Oscar nominated. Because I remember I there was, was a very short Oscars. window when I cared about the Oscars, and it and was, was the two it. years that we were in graduate school, and I <laughs> okay. only cared enough because I'm like I need something to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Happy St. Patrick's Day. That's why we're doing this movie. We're trying to release oh, yeah. this on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, in the back is a picture of me in Ireland at the Cliffs of Moher, the site of one of the Horcruxes, but more importantly, the Cliffs of Insanity. Yeah, it was the Horcrux that Dumbledore had to drink the the water. Um, yeah. It was a locket. A locket. Evil locket. The locket that they carried around for the next movie for 17 hours, I think it was. Yeah. It was a long movie. Oh, full okay. of camping. And carrying around a locket. You're not bitter at all. <laughs> no, no. I mean, technically on a one single book, the movie version of it, I spent $30 because I had to buy two tickets to two different movies. Oh, it's uh, in Deathly Hallows? Part yes. one? Yes. Because I've only seen Deathly Hallows part two. That's confusing. We'll work on that. <laughs> Deeply confusing. Yeah, well, I'm eventually sure. we will have to come around to one of our generation's like critical fantasy genre. Yeah, 
sagas, <laughs> unfortunately, with everything that's going on with the person who created the world. Uh, but we will eventually get there. But yeah, um, Michael, where is your your photo? So this is in Kirikiridi, I think. Um, when I visited Ireland, we went to Northern Ireland, did like the little tour, and Giant's Causeway and all that. <clears throat> and we stopped by here. It has like this crazy little bridge that you cross. But um, I was very excited because I brought my film camera. So I got to take pictures of all the pretty things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't, it is a we didn't go to Cliff some photo. Yeah, it's a gorgeous, thank you. gorgeous photo. It's a uh, beautiful rainy day. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Ireland is actually like I know people are like, okay, yeah, it's green, but it's like it's what raining all the time, so it's so green. <laughs> yeah, even like your photo, Cullen, is also like foggy, a little rainy, very <laughs> yeah. windy. <laughs> yeah, my hair, my my at the time very ginger hair was like swooped up. Yeah, well, I mean, you stepped off the plane and that red just came right back. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's yeah, the this, color contrast to the green. I. Up. I mean, I also took this photo. It is at a uh, castle. O'Leary Castle. Castle. JPEG, yeah. <laughs> O'Leary Castle. Uh, but it looks north sunny. Of yeah, there you go. Uh, I did happen to get it, you know, on a sunny day. I did not take this yeah. photo. I can't even continue with did that you, bit. Did you name it after the pub we used to go to? Not Cornwall's, but there's O'Leary's. Did you ever come to with us to O'Leary's in Boston? Yes, I think I was there uh, not on St. Patrick's no, Day, but we near St. The... Patrick's Day, because I remember there was still decorations. Yeah, Isn't we... that the one uh, by the sea line? No, that I think that is the Green, Dra- Green Dragon. Oh, then that's the one I went to. Yeah, because that was our, our, our friend always wanted to go there on St. Patrick's Day, and I'd be like, I don't think this is technically an Irish pub, but okay. Right, yeah. Uh, but O'Leary's was, I don't think it's open anymore, but it was a very, like, I knew the people there. It was like a very, like, Irish, Irish bar. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, we're, okay, so, yeah, this movie, I have seen it. I think I saw it once with my family, and I think I watched it with my ex, and then I was a Bible study leader in college, you know? Had to sign away, don't drink, don't be gay, don't have sex, sign that. Uh, and then I hosted our St. Patrick's Day party for my Bible study, which was, I'm going to humble, my Bible, not humble brag, just straight up brag. I had a very, <laughs> my Bible study was very well attended because... I wasn't a commuter and I was like the only one in the dorms and like everyone knew me. So it was like, we actually had fun. Uh, so like you could get- I Bible got, study, <laughs> but make it fun. Make it fun. Yeah. <laughs> Repackage the trauma. Uh, but we, <laughs> for St. Patrick's Day, we watched Secret of Kells and it was really fun. But then I was like tired. I think I was a junior, I don't know, sophomore, but I was, no, I was a sophomore, but like I want everyone to leave and so I had a floor meeting and like you know usually when you're a resident you don't go to your floor meetings but I was like oh I gotta go to my floor meeting they just stayed in my room they stayed in my room and hung out I went to my floor and came back they were still there I eventually had to kick them out one of them left chip crumbs all over my bed oh that's so rude <laughs> but it was it was a good time and I was like you know what this is a great problem to have I guess like I can't get the people to go home yeah. they're having that so much fun yeah yeah that's nice yeah mm-hmm. so uh yeah i've watched this movie a few times uh so i thought this is a great movie to talk about for saint patrick's season because i mean when are we gonna watch the veggie tales saint patrick's episode probably not <laughs> oh we should have though veggie tales man love veggie tales so uh probably the best piece of christian art since the literal book of cows <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh so uh this movie uh was written by fabrice zilkowski and directed by tom moore and nora tomey uh first feature film of cartoon saloon it was a joint irish belgian production but the company is very specifically irish and does a lot of irish folklore hence why we will be revisiting some of these movies at a later date uh, it was nominated for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars, but lost to Up. Of course. The hipsters were in full force. This is 2009, <laughs> you know? Uh, and the... Uh, uh, yeah, Quest for Camelot, I think, died in the cultural memory that day. It was... Never even heard of that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah, because it was trying to be the irish or celtic 
animated film like with a river dancey sound but a it was set in england because camelot and b it was not good uh yeah that's confusing so it like <laughs> especially you, the not good part you know the song the prayer josh groban does it maybe sing it you, sing it and maybe i'll know <laughs> me trying to sing josh groban <laughs> uh I can't even attempt that because it's like it's it's not like it's not like there's like a hummable tune it's very much like a, I'm Jackie Ivanko and I'm like singing like it's like this mother's prayer for her child and it's this big epic thing that like the Celtic women's of the world like those kind of artists cover and Got it's it. from Quest for Camelot which is so random wait when was Quest for Camelot. Yeah, it was I was like a, lit- a child child when Quest for Camelot came out. Got it. Okay. But yeah, so this movie was like, yeah, you can do like a Celtic animated movie. Uh yeah. Uh, and let's... make it accessible to dumb Americans <laughs> like me. <laughs> Which See, who who are not tied to any of their cultural heritage at all. Like I'm I got nothing going on for me. Quest Green for Camelot was not very much a. Te- I didn't intend this to be a roast of Quest for Camelot, but it did not have. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> well, it did not have a great connection to Celtic culture. Really, it was like yeah. we've seen Riverdance once. Uh, yeah. So, let's talk about the lore. There's, a, I I did make sure to get the notes right for this one because there's a lot to cover and it's all very interconnected, but it does kind of there's like an an almost a narrative that we can build uh we are going to talk about what the book of kells is right because i'm still a little confused yeah there is some (laughs) assumptions and i think they made those assumptions or like didn't state some things because i don't think everyone would be fully comfortable with certain things if they were stated oh oh yeah so this uh movie or this no not the movie uh (laughs) So in our first, when we're introducing ourselves to this podcast, I said, my name is a variation of handsome boy or meaning twink or something like that. That is like the internet Google, what does this name mean kind of thing. But it's more of, it has an association with the concept of a handsome boy, but it, it kind of means like hound or like hound of this specific guy. Uh, Oh. Like dog. Um, And that's because of... Uh, Kahulan. Uh, you know, they, I've heard it pronounced many ways. I grew up with Kahulan. I'm going with that because if I try another one, I will just keep going saying Kahulan again anyway. <laughs> but uh, the other one that I've heard is more in line with your name. You like Kukulan, right? Kukulan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he is this demigod, uh, the son of the god Lu. Uh, so I, I'm also, I'm assuming, descended from Lu, just. You know, there was a fairy court in my ancestor's hometown. So I'm just very blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so he was this like super powerful, cart- almost cartoony kid. And he at one point killed somebody's dog and then like felt bad about it. So he took the dog's <laughs> name and that became his name. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, um, I guess, one way to do it. And he has this big epic story involving like a pregnancy curse and warrior queens and cows. And so hopefully, I don't know if there is a film adaptation. There should be, but we'll get there. <laughs> not uh, yet. Not yet. With Mike Cullen Callahan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're going to change your name to Cahoolan. Cahoolan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I, Cahoolan himself wrote this, yeah. Uh, but this name is also connected to St. Cullum Kale meaning dove of the church. Uh, he loved trees, but he also had an association with being, when he was young, he was very handsome and girls would chase him and he would like throw himself naked into thorns to like escape so them. So, so me. <laughs> so me. <laughs> to escape them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but naked. He had but to be naked. naked. Yeah, he's like, it's gonna hurt. Because, <laughs> no, I might be getting it mixed up because there, there's a different saint, probably I think like an Italian who would, it was to be like, so I don't feel lust. But I think this the story with Columbia wasn't that he felt lust. It was that he just wanted to like physically avoid them. Mm, sure. He was like jumping <laughs> in the the thorns. Right. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but we'll, yeah. 
They're like, well, that's a Yikes. quirk. You could just said nobody. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I'm that disgusting. You'd rather jump the thorns. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Needed that. Uh, so he was a religious leader, but he often clashed with other people uh, and like monasteries and would cause conflicts. And he was mad when they were like doing deforestation. And so eventually he founded the monastery of Iona in Scotland. Uh mm-hmm. You know, despite having very Catholic parents, I was not named after Colum Kill. I was named after the demigod. Interesting. So, yeah. That must be what my baptism didn't take. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Pope was like, I know this. I know this story. Yeah. And I have a feeling this kid, named after the demigod, not the religious leader. So uh, I mentioned I started with this intro because it shows this duality in Irish culture of like the pagan and the Christian and how in a lot of different cultures, they're very kind of opposed. I think not as much as people think, but they're in Irish culture, they're pretty interwoven. Uh, Mm -hmm. For example, like the Trinity knot, we see it in the movie, like the three knots. We used to have one in our home. And then I remember like, like we had friends from Poland over and they were like, this is like a neo-pagan symbol. And like, cause in that, that culture, it's seen as a pagan symbol, but Irish culture, it's seen as like, oh, it's like the Trinity. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, but yeah, let's let's start with the pagan, the pre-Christian, the uh, religion that's not Christian, whatever you want to call it, uh, because people prefer different terms. But uh, so the Irish mythology is divided into cycles or like series of stories, and the first is a series of invasions. Many of them oddly tied to characters from Noah's Ark. We'll get into that when we talk about who wrote these stories. Uh, of Erin, Eru, Ireland. So these different like races or tribes would conquer the land. One of them was all women, but then like because of drama, the men, the like they had like two men, and then they died, and then they didn't have anyone else to repopulate. Uh, they threw themselves into the thorns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, they're like, I can't deal with all these women anymore. Let's just end it. Happy Women's Month. <laughs> Happy Women's yeah. Month. <laughs> uh. So they, there's also these evil, ugly people called the Formonians who, like, lived on the outskirts and would, like, raid. So eventually, sh- this ties back to our Black Cauldron episode, we get the Tuatha de Danon, the people of the goddess Danu, who took over and they had on-again, off-again wars with the Formonians. Uh, notable, mem- notable members include the first king, Nauda, who lost his arm and so couldn't be king because that was, like, a rule. You had to have all your limbs uh wow. there was ableist <laughs> yep uh the, in egypt you gotta be a top in ireland <laughs> you you gotta be gotta a... have working limbs i <laughs> yeah, guess you gotta be ableist uh there was followed he was followed by brez who sucked and was bad for everyone there's arma the poet dine kelt the healer dagda who was like this jolly father god of like beer there was lou who was just like good at everything morgan was a shape-shifting goddess of war associated with the ravens uh, and there is the sea god Lear, Angus, the god of love and youth, and there is Bridget, a goddess of fire, inspiration, poetry, basically everything, also cows, and Eru, a goddess of sovereign sovereignty, like the goddess of Ireland itself. Hmm. So are they gods or superpowered people? So we talked about with the Welsh lore, for a while we thought these characters were gods, and then they were like, maybe this is just like a magic lady. Like, uh, <laughs> like there was, it's unclear. Um... We're pretty sure the Tuatha Dé Danann in our gods, uh, and especially because they have similar names to the gods of other Celtic peoples. Um, but we do only have info about them from Christian sources who do not call them gods or fairies. They're just kind of this guy. Um, so uh, the Tuatha were later defeated by the Milesians or the Gael or the Irish. So just regular humans uh, because they got the goddess of ireland on their side and they were driven into the city mounds and they lived underground in the other world kind of like in between place so these like the burial mounds or the fairy forts like these ancient mm-hmm. places uh they lived in this magical world of eternal summer and happiness where like time would be weird and uh you could eat stuff and be stuck there it was connected to like the islands of youth like Tirnanog. that's the village in uh, beauty and the beast time is really weird <laughs> yeah yeah got it cool uh uh and Tirnanog was there's some connections with 
Avalon, the apple-themed island of Welsh lore, where King Arthur oh. goes when he dies. Yeah. Uh, so they became the... See, this is always my problem. I write this stuff down, and then I never look up the pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> they became the AOC who lived... Like AOC? AOC? <laughs> oh my god, I love her. Uh, they live in fairy mounds, and they use like fairy mist. And they didn't just jump from gods to little pixies, especially because pixies are specifically a Cornish thing or a Zoe Deschanel character. Uh, <laughs> they were like these kind of vague mystical, myth- mythical beings, various sizes and powers. Like how we talked about with trolls, like it was a while before they were like codified. Uh, and really, that was you could say Tolkien or even King James, uh, the first of England, the son of Mary Queen of Scots, who liked to run all, write all his witch hunt books, and that was popular at the time. Like people had witch hunt books, and then that they started to be like a fairy is this. Um, uh, it was like practical. It was like the monster manual, but for real life. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, fairy comes from Latin for like fate, uh, and then to French and English. Uh, so they eventually, because of the English colonization of Ireland, they kind of like just became fairies. Uh, it used to mean in medieval literature, like wise woman or enchantress. So the Brothers Grimm always translate it this way. They do not include fairies in their stories because they consider them too French. Uh, but sometimes it also just meant like a magical person, like a queen or a knight would be like a fairy queen, but didn't necessarily mean they were a different race. Or it meant they came from the land of fairy, which was like magic, the magical land. Right. Uh, again, uh, vague, vague. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Ireland was colonized. Uh, we have talked about how white people do want to be colonized so bad. Uh, so you're it, welcome. It did <laughs> We're happen. Here to tell to, you it was, ha- it happened. It did happen. Uh, did not Multiple really. times didn't fit uh the modern narrative because at the time they were pretty actively catholic uh but uh they still were colonized and you know it sucked for them so yeah uh maybe we could just stop colonizing instead of wishing we were the ones who got colonized yeah. <laughs> dab uh, uh, <laughs> dab <laughs> that felt ever. appropriate i don't <laughs> yeah. know uh, so also, if you notice, I listed a bunch of the Chihuahua D. Dan and I did not mention Crom Cruick. Oh, uh, that's the, right. Yeah. So we only really know about him from not just Christian sources, but stories about Christianity. Oh. Uh, like St. Patrick, it was like this idol that people would like do blood sacrifices to. And St. Patrick like broke it down and defeated it. And that was popular in that kind of story of like destroying an idol was popular in a lot of saints lives saint patrick never mentioned it himself he never said oh this is something i did uh we have writings about him we have him yelling at the english bishops for allowing people to enslave his people (laughs) so like we know stuff some stuff he said and he didn't he never talked about that so it's most likely an invention especially because he doesn't appear in any of the myths but i i could not confirm nor deny uh but yeah it's just kind of like evil god you know oh look at this old evil god they worshipped uh so then jesus hits the scene or more accurately saint patrick uh so when it comes to the lives of the saints you get a pretty myth and history are intertwined and it's usually there are a lot of times when it's pretty obvious it's myth um but then sometimes it's like well what is the history and it's a bit of both. Uh, so Patrick was a Romano Christian boy, Patricius, kidnapped by slavers, escapes, and then he feels called by God to go back and teach them the good news. Uh, so he does so pretty successfully. Uh, so I did a research report on like a, this time period in Ireland or the time kind of after. Um, and I get I was like getting books from the library about it. And I so I read a lot about it like over 10 years ago um what i remember is from that research is the conversion in ireland was fairly gradual it was fast but it was it wasn't like how their like tribes where charlemagne would be like convert or i'm gonna kill you all uh Mm -hmm. it was just kind of like like a trend almost like everyone's converting Mm -hmm. and people are like well like i don't want to be a like loser you know like (laughs) or you know genuine religious faith probably a mix of both uh, so it was a slow transition <laughs> and they just kind of gradually 
replaced Christianity replaced the, the druids, but they also kind of combined as what happens when it's not like a top down thing. It's just kind of like a thing people do. Uh, so that kind of adds to the kind of mixed character uh, and why there isn't as much of a direct conflict because there wasn't like, as far as I know on a large scale, like there was no king who was strong enough to like have an army and like go around and like kill everyone who didn't agree with him. Like the high king was more of a ceremonial role where he had to have sex with a horse. So had to. we're going to get into that. No, we're not, I mean, I <laughs> slipped in the mud on the hill where that king used to have sex with a white mare. Uh, well, then. Yeah, I had mud all over my pants. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so it's just kind of, it's like in Rome. You would have had to stand on a stool, just, you know, because horses are tall. Yeah. Because that, <laughs> anyway. I mean, he actually did. I don't think Catherine the Great ever had sex with a horse, but I think the high kings did. Yeah. Um, But so it's kind of like, you know, like in Rome, like in Italy, by the time Christianity was like really taking off, like Roman polytheism was already kind of like, it wasn't in its heyday. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, But speaking of like the the persecution stories of like Romans persecuting Christians, the Irish people were upset that they they didn't have that because people weren't violent. They were just like getting to convert. They're like, Uh what (laughs) yeah they're like we want to be martyrs too so they invented eco-friendly sustainable martyrdom called green (laughs) martyrdom green green yeah and so they would go to beautiful sites in nature and they would like just like be hermits uh and Uh often these places were sacred in druid religion so Uh there was a connection there or like uh, i went to holywell when i was in ireland that was like a, a druid, like it was a holy site where they they believe the well had healing powers and then it just adapted to Christianity and you would like leave stuff on the tree, like your rosary, your scapular. So uh, mm. yeah. Um, so, but the hermits were become popular and then other people want to join their hermit thing. And then it got too big to be a hermit thing. And so they yeah. do monasteries. Oh. oh. Okay. And these monasteries were almost like small cities because Ireland didn't have big cities. Like even when Dublin came to the scene, that was a Viking thing. Like the Irish were pretty rural. Uh, so like the bishops were basically like chaplains to the like thousands of royal families and the abbots and abbesses, yes, abbesses as well, would have kind of play a more similar role to like, the bishops on the continent. Because uh, the monasteries were like where a lot of people lived, like monasteries would go to war with each other sometimes. Uh, yeah. Um, wow. They had to like make laws being like you can't go to war, <laughs> just be monks. <laughs> uh, Why would they go to war with each other? Probably beef over something silly. I mean, again, the most famous beef Irish over war... sheep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the so famous sheep. Irish war epic that Cuchulain Cú- Cú- is from is about a cow. It's because the warrior Literal queen, beef. yeah, the yes, the warrior queen is comparing. The first chapter is called Pillow Talk, and she's com- her and her husband are comparing how much they own, and they have. Everything is it literally equal. called Pillow Talk? Yeah, they have everything equal, and he, but he has this cow that's really nice, and she's like, "Well, I need a cow that's really nice," and the people of Ulster have a cow that's really nice, and she unites everyone against them to get the cow. <laughs> Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. To me, right. way better than the setup for the Iliad. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the being fought over, the woman is the warrior and she's fighting over a cow. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, That's valid. That's valid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, these monasteries were centers a for A cow life. that launched a thousand <laughs> Irish people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the monasteries were centers for learning. Uh, and they were kind of like big in Europe, like people would come from all over Europe and maybe the world. There was a lot of crafting that was done, a lot of arts and crafts, uh, and many beautiful manuscripts were on the the illuminated manuscripts. Mm-hmm. One of those with the Book of Kells, it's uh an illustrated Latin copy of the four gospels. And uh it's currently at Trinity College in Dublin. I did see it. Oh, me too. Yeah. It's a big line, yeah, totally but the line wasn't it. too bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Hannah was there. She was definitely have been out of the country. Uh huh. Definitely. 
Uh, I, I do have a passport. It definitely has been used. <laughs> that that employ employment authorization it comes in handy. Uh, it does actually. Yeah. So the the importance of these monasteries to Western civilization is often actually understated uh because the irish were poor people so why would we talk about things they did uh so in the dark ages like the literal like rome just fell people are sacking stuff mm. uh things are getting burned uh we lost a lot of works of like the greek and roman pagan world of like jewish and christian world uh like i think like some people like some of the byzantines had them and like the islamic world and when that came had a lot of it but a lot was lost Mm. And it would have been totally lost if it actually weren't for the Irish monks copying it because they had copies and they wrote it down. So we would not have made it to like the like high Middle Ages with the full Bible if it wasn't for the Irish writing it down because stuff kept getting destroyed. So, mm. I mean, you can decide whether or not you want to be thankful for that particular save, but they saved a lot. <laughs> Hopefully they save the good parts. <laughs> yeah. uh, but there was a lot. Oh, that if was... that's the good parts. <laughs> mm. Oh boy. Uh, oh my. But there is a lot that was like we 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 maybe found it now, but people wouldn't have had access to it mm. for centuries right. because of everything. So it's kind mm. of like a thing that's ignored um, because they need to be barbarians. We could colonize. We. I'm not related to any. I'm probably related to some English people. <laughs> not that I know of. Uh, but like the like yeah it's just they they did a lot to contribute to civilization so like they were having their peak when everyone else was like eh, not having a good time <laughs> uh yeah so uh that's actually the reason we know so much about the pre-christian traditions of this small island that the rome deemed too insignificant to conquer that's the reason the romans never went to ireland they're like who fucking cares yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, as you see from the name recognition, most of the Celtic gods and myths they were similar ones in France with the Gauls, with the Welsh, the like people of the British Isles. But when the Romans came and conquered those people, a lot occasionally they would like take the name and attach it to like Apollo or Minerva or something. But in general, like most of what we know was totally lost. So that's why when people talk about Celtic, they often mean Irish, even though there were Celtic people all across all western europe their yeah. culture was essentially i mean colonized obliterated like taken over by roman culture hmm. so or at least like funneled through rome you know right uh so the but the monks and nuns in ireland wrote it down about like the so even though they added like weird connections to noah's ark to like try and make it like kosher that's the reason we have anything you know, it's because I'm someone being like, oh, I hate that the monks did that. Like, we don't, like, it ruins so much of our knowledge. I'm like, well, if they didn't, we would have had nothing. Listen, they were doing a lot of copying. They had a lot of creative ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they had to get them out. They were, they were it was fanfic. It was Bible yeah. a crossover. They yeah. made it better. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that is something, like, with, like, the toy and, like, the big epic, like, suddenly, suddenly you'll get to, like, a section, and it becomes this, like, huge epic poetic thing, and then it switches to, like, kind of a totally different tone, and they think it's because, like, some people writing it down were like, hmm, I have an idea, I'm gonna make this really dramatic, you know, uh -huh. this is my touch on the story. They're just trying to capture people's attention, you know? Yeah. True. Yeah. The same way we do now. Uh... So this period, Ireland was often called the Isle of Saints and Scholars because this was before there was the official like saint process. So everyone could just be like, yeah, this is a saint. Uh, and that's why this random island uh, gets to compete with the Catholic Church's institutional faves of Italy and France in the Saint Olympics for most saints. Because they just <laughs> called everyone a saint and got to compete with the institutional favoritism those two countries had got. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that includes St. Kevin of Glendalo or Glendalock. I saw his monastery when I was there. Uh, St. Columbanus of Luxeil, who that's in France. So Irish, Irish people were founding monasteries actually all across Europe. They were going on trips and like mm -hmm. establishing stuff. Uh, Columb Kill of Iona and Bridget of Kildare is a big one. So a reason she's big mm -hmm. is you may remember one of the goddesses was named Bridget. So it's discussed as whether it was just the goddess transplanted into a new context, 
whether there was a real woman and she just kind of absorbed the functions of the goddess. Her fe- feast day in the church is the same day of the festival to Bridget Imbolc, which is a major Wiccan and Neo-Pagan holiday now. Uh, and her monastery Kildare means Church of the Oak, based named after like the sacred trees of the Druids, and they tended a sacred fire to Bridget uh, that they kept there uh, until Henry VIII, you may know him as the husband of the characters in the musical Six. Six. Yeah, uh, exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Uh, he shut it down. He shut down the fire. He was like, no more. Uh, <laughs> he sucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this adds to a gender thing in the dynamics of this era of Ireland. So Bridget was given power equal to a bishop. And this the story behind this is because the person who was supposed to anoint her abbess opened the wrong page and accidentally made her a bishop and they all just went with it uh and so i love that in art she's holding like the staff of a bishop a crozier Uh uh-huh uh and that's like one of the ways you can recognize this as bridget you know like people have their little symbols yeah uh and these monasteries would have both monks and nuns they wouldn't be totally separate and sometimes women would be the abbess and they'd be in charge of the whole thing including to men including maybe Whoa. men and i uh i remember saying that when doing that research report in high school people being like oh my god that's so bad and i was like why she was the same like <laughs> like i'm gonna that's do so bad <laughs> yeah like people were like shocked and i was like i don't know <laughs> this was like i eh, this was the olden days and <laughs> they lived closer to jesus than we did uh yeah and this this trend of like women having religious authority in the monastic sense over men wasn't entirely just in Ireland. It happened a little bit in France. Mm-hmm. And another Bridget, St. Bridget of Sweden, was a big fan of this. She had this idea because uh, she's like, you know, Mary was the queen of heaven. So it makes sense that a woman would be in charge of the monastery. Uh, she uh, the other nobles in Sweden found her very annoying but she did, in the spirit of that, travel through Europe during the Black Plague to tell the Pope he was bad at his job. So Love that. Yeah. Thanks for uh, my favorite. Well, they didn't have Twitter back then. What was she going to do? <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, bad, bad I gotta the go horse. to the Vatican. Uh, so after the fall of Rome, like a lot of places in Europe were conquered by new tribes, and so there were less Christians, right? Um, and so the Irish began to evangelize those people. And I would like to say this is a thing. Shut the fuck up. Annoying guy from high school who told me I was stupid for saying that. You tried to catfish my brother, pretend to be a woman. <laughs> Shout out to that guy. I hope you get help. Uh, so, yeah, we do sincerely yeah. hope you get <laughs> no, we, help. We hope you're doing better than you were at that time. Yeah, you were clearly going through a rough spot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> This So eventually the Irish way of doing things clashed with the official Pope approved way of doing things, Mm. especially when, so the Pope sent people to Southern England and the Irish came through Scotland and they met in the middle. And so the Irish did their hair differently, like their monk hair, because instead of, you know, like the the circle around, Mm -hmm. they did like, (laughs) like, I think it was a Kristen Wiig character almost where it's like they shaved the whole front and then they had long hair in the back. Okay. Okay. So monk in the it. front, pun in the back. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they, I love it. they reckoned like their calendar was slightly different. So they celebrated Easter on a different day. Because mm. oh. calendars were not, were, I mean, in pretty living in like pretty recorded history is when they, we've picked our calendar. So, mm. you know, sometimes when people say, oh, in this day and whatever, I'm like, according to somebody, who knows? Yeah. According uh, to one person <laughs> in one village. Uh, <laughs> And so I think, but I do think the women thing, like the women having a lot of authority was a thing. And so they had a meeting, St. Hilda of Whitby on the Irish side. She hosted a meeting with the local king and the bishops from some from like abbots from Ireland, bishops from Rome. And they convinced the king to side with Rome because the Romans were like, well, we have St. Peter. And he's like our patron and he has the keys to heaven. And the king's like, well, then he's going to lock me out of heaven like Bruno Mars (laughs) if I don't side with the Romans. So he sided with the Romans 
establishing precedent in England for the king to establish the religion of the country. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So the Irish way that kind of led to it being like, no, we don't do this anymore. And they had to adopt like the rules of the Benedictines and the Cistercians and other like mainland monasteries. Uh, and so they had to do things the Roman way. Uh, but because of this conflict, Henry VIII, again, the husband of the, guy, the people from six, yeah, uh, he used this as evidence to be like, well, there was like a pre-papal British form of Christianity. So the thing I'm doing is I can get with Anne Boleyn uh, and like ruin my first wife's life and abandon my oldest child. There's there's a reason for me to do that. Uh, and so there is some, there's some validity, not to Henry, but to that, that <laughs> argument. Uh, and some people kind of compare it to like the Eastern Orthodox way, you know, like the Byzantines and like they're like, cause they, it was a different form of Christianity. Uh, and so they're like, oh, they didn't acknowledge the Pope. And others are just kind of like, I think they did, but he was just very geographically far. So it's not <laughs> like they could like get his approval for things. So they just were like, okay, we're going to do this. Yeah. You know, they're like, shout out to you, but like, <laughs> there's like the ends of the earth for them. <laughs> you know, there's poor people on this island, you know. Uh, but this sometimes marks a moment of like religious colonialism in Ireland. You know, like what had become a very native flavor was then replaced with a uh, mainland import and kind of... uh would later lead to the reason Ireland ended up in British hands anyway is because there's only ever been one English Pope and when he was Pope, he gave Ireland to the King of England. Wow. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> that's why there's only one English Pope, I guess. They're like, that went badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's why there's this kind of passion for this semi-mythic golden age of Ireland as depicted in this film, where it's like, still very christian but also still a little pagan so a little other still you know it's not just like europe it's a very specific you know uh because like if we in the beating the beast movies other than a few like tones or like shout outs to things about france it doesn't feel this is french this story could only be set in france as this right. story it feels very like this could only be set here in ireland yeah yeah for sure so that's uh that's the that's the lore. That is very interesting. Okay, so to recap, yeah, the Book of Kells is a an illustrated version of the four gospels. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, you know how people would come, I don't know, maybe people would come to my campus and they'd give out Bibles that were just the gospels. Uh it's like that, but way better. Right. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, this apparently has, like, really cool drawings in it. Yeah, and it, I mean, it I imagine take... those didn't, because they're small. They're meant to be, you know, carried around really quickly. They're carried around and honestly thrown in the trash. Thrown in the trash, exactly. It's <laughs> always, so like, if if you're Christian, you probably imagine have a Bible. Imagine full-size Bibles <laughs> with, you know, lots of pictures and stuff. It's just the four Gospels. You know how, how often they'd have to take out the trash when that happens? <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh what a waste College. of plastic yeah oh my gosh they were updating <clears throat> those trashes all the time yeah it's uh and those books like that would take years to complete and that's why some of the drawings were straight up because the people were bored or they would put little notes in or they were being done by 12 year old children yeah yes <laughs> uh yeah so that is uh that is the lore that this pulls from so a little bit we veered in a, a little more historical yeah you know, but that I think that does add a context. I mean, mm -hmm. we know Vikings were raiding. I don't think I need to explain that Vikings <laughs> raided. <laughs> yeah. the, way, the way they were portrayed in this was kind of funny, though. It was. You know what? But right now, Sweden is trying to kick out all its refugees. So, sorry, Scandinavia. You deserve this one. <laughs> uh... Yeah. And it, I mean, we can talk about it, but I actually think it was effective in that, like, it it, not that it completely separates uh, the Viking history and culture from the actual like people who live there now, but it does other this history in a way where like you can kind of forget that those ancestors 
you know, yeah. made people who are still there. So it's not like <laughs> necessarily critiquing the current culture, you yeah. know? It's more like this was a historical thing and they were fucking awful. I mean, they did just raid and burn and pillage as yeah. many thieves and invaders did and still do. Yes. Um, yes. And I don't think even... I mean, just because sure Denmark and Finland aren't doing it now doesn't mean they didn't do it in the in the past. Yeah, and yeah, I don't. But we're think... not criticizing them now. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff they're doing to the Sami people, we don't can, love that. We don't love that. But I don't think actual Norway is like, hey, don't misrepresent the Viking Raiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I mean, this maybe was... they are. I don't know. I mean, if if this was a movie about like the americans and the indigenous peoples of north america white americans would be like you're demonizing us and it's like listen no they did it (laughs) they did it (laughs) we we we, you know we just tried to animate in the most neutral way possible (laughs) i mean it's because to the people in this movie the vikings didn't feel like other people especially for brendan if we're going from this young boys they're monsters they're going after it was really effective yeah 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 i mean because this says a high body count for a family animated film yeah, I, I was very glad I didn't. I mean, I started parts of it and had my kids with me for a bit. <laughs> and yeah. then like, I will finish it's like, this later. Let's get a snack. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will wait. Yeah, no, I, I was watching this and I texted Cullen and I was like, there's a literal <laughs> massacre. But then like, you see some of the people and they they actually survived i was like okay at least some people survived but i was also like that's scary that was it was very scary and i'm i'm glad the little like little baby ginger girl didn't die i was like i I know this girl (laughs) but then she was seeing this old man die in front of her that was crazy Anyway, we're we're skipping ahead. I know she'll have to do therapy or maybe their equivalent (laughs) is she's gonna have to write a fancy book. Yep. (laughs) Put your the trauma book of on is so these... pretty though. Yeah. It is. This well, is it, a... it, it was until the cover was stolen. Yeah. It's a beautiful film. Beautiful style. Uh very unique. Uh, but I I'm get... we'll talk about this when we talk about the look at the end. Uh, yeah. so we open with this creepy little fae child eye eyeballs in the trees. Whispering. So creepy. And I literally <laughs> texted Cullen, I was like. You should have told me to take an edible before I started watching this. <laughs> Man, I was creeped out at first. Um, but yeah. She's been a salmon, a deer, wolf. Uh, there's two wolves inside of you. One of them's Asling. Uh, <laughs> so she sees the Northmen looking for gold and hunting into the fall of Iona. Uh, an island, easy to attack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then we we cut to the Abbey of Kells. Uh, it's a small village with a big under construction wall. And Build middle... that wall. I know. I was like, "Ooh, this is this hits different." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, we do have historical proof that like the Vikings were doing really, really, really bad stuff. Yeah. So now I'm like, yes, build that wall. Yeah, the Vikings weren't mm-hmm. looking to just like get a job get in your town with their families they were like we're burning your stuff and then putting yeah we're stuff pillaging in we're yeah. doing terrible things to other human beings yeah um uh, and we meet this little ginger scamp brendan the second i saw him i was like that's cullen <laughs> <laughs> uh he's trying to catch a goose you know ginger ginger boys in fantasy and the geese race clashing Question. yeah this so this was, goose was being controlled by a 17 year old playing goose game untitled goose yeah. game i no okay because taryn in black cauldron he attacked a goat but the geese laughed at him <laughs> no, no 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 let's be very clear that little shit he was rude to animals <laughs> yeah this kid he's getting a goose we don't know why until like you know he does it but like He's not like 
He there's like a reason. Punch the goose. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah. Karen does it for just no reason. And he's he. There's pigs there mean. too. There's cute little pigs. Uh, there's a. Uh, he doesn't do anything to the pigs. No. He's nice to the pigs. There's a field hockey game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we get some cartoon antics where he's chasing and he's followed by some of the monks who are from all over the world. Uh, I'm glad I- that you mentioned that in your <laughs> lore drop because I was so confused. It's like. I did not realize that there would be people from all over the world at these at these abbeys. So that was really interesting. Yeah, like would someone from like China and Japan have been there? I mean, yeah. not impossible, not likely, but like North Africa. That's possible. Yeah. You know, yeah. Rome was pretty cosmopolitan, you know. So yeah. it's like the yeah, it was it's very conceivable there would be people who were not white, people with various different shades, you know, uh yeah, so I it, it is they may be modernizing a bit, so like a modern audience will read that. Oh, people are coming right. here from far away. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it's it, there's a reason for that. You know, it's not just woke diversity, guy. <laughs> they can tell the different accents, though. <laughs> yeah, the accents. I was like, hmm. I I don't know if these would be made accents. now. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because I'm pretty sure the voice actor for at least Brother Tang, I'm pretty sure was the same as another monk and Caucasian. Love that. We love that. Yeah. Stan uh, it. We definitely do. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that was, it was just like something I was like, I'm really confused. I thought these would just be all Irish people. Um, but yeah, I did. I read it as like, oh, so people come from different places in the world to these places. Yeah. Because they were like, they were like big, this was before university, so these were like big centers of learning. Right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so they're chasing the goose. They catch it after some antics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's for, they're trying to get feathers for the scriptorium, quills, to mm-hmm. write. Um, but the abbot doesn't love the antics. His name's Callum, right? Callum, I think. Uh, I had I just kept thinking Brendan Gleeson so I don't know yeah that's <laughs> exactly uh yeah I think I Callum was the name of someone Colic, like Soccer King Col- I think it was a CH at the end that's the the accent I, there, I'm saying the accent is why we're like unclear of the name so just <laughs> yeah, just okay. it. not gonna lie I had to watch this with the uh the closed captions uh um, I checked book of Kells instead of secret of Kells uh, you can continue. Okay. Yeah, Kellogg. C E L L A C H. Brendan Gleeson. Yes. Yeah, Brendan, Brendan Gleeson. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> uh, so he's like Brendan. I asked you for the plans. Uh, he's obsessed with this wall. Obsessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yikes. Red <laughs> flag. Uh, but we learned that it's for a, a really good cause. And um, yeah. we'll talk about it. But I loved the sort of conflict between uh, what these people think is the right thing to do to preserve their culture, preserve their people. That it is a very... It's very interesting and even though one side is very obviously like the side the protagonist is on I think it is interesting that like you kind of see like there's a there's like a there's merit to both sides there's like a good yeah. reason yeah. um especially because like the abbot never does anything like heinous in pursuit yeah. of his goal like he's oh just I mean a he little, does lock his he nephew does lock Brendan in the, yeah. in the cellar which is his bedroom Locks it from the outside so yeah. he cannot get out. That's pretty heinous. That's pretty heinous, I but guess. But you know what? Olden days, you know. Olden... Yeah, yeah, I meant like like a like a Frollo and Hunchback, like that kind of gotta preserve our culture, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it is interesting that he because he he says that Brendan's gonna inherit the monastery, which yeah. is the thing that happened. So now and for what and in modern times, you are elected. Mother Superior, right. Abbess, Abbot, whatever. I don't think they call them Abbots anymore. But, you know, it's... Yeah. Uh, you're elected. Uh, 
and there's like terms and like term limits and stuff but... please uh, vote in your next monastery elections thank <laughs> please, you yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just want to show up to one and be like so can i vote uh <laughs> Uh, but there's. Do you have your Irish card? <laughs> Irish card. Ding. Ding. Uh, my mother. You have to have it a certain. I don't know it might have changed, but it had to be a certain distance on your mother's side. To get Irish oh, I think it can go either way now. Oh yeah, uh, I think they it changed just depends. That. Yeah, there's like there's other stipulations, but yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, where's it going with that? Oh yeah, uh, monastery card. elections. So. But this was a, this was a thing why the Catholic Church invented the whole thing of priests have to be celibate because they didn't want churches, parishes, monasteries to be oh, passed down, passed down. But people uh, found loopholes, whether that was having bastard children or nephews or, you know, the Borgias. They had a show. They did that. <laughs> they had a show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never watched it. <laughs> no. no. Uh, Jeremy Irons was in it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read I the the Snow White book by the guy who wrote Wicked that involved the Borgias. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was not very good. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two words: so unicorn jizz. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah uh, those are two words two words, <laughs> two words okay. i didn't want in the same scene in a snow white retelling all right so uh <laughs> can't wait to talk about that one on the pod <laughs> yeah so they they brendan goes to the scriptorium to get the plans and then he's distracted because you know he's a kid i was yeah. like that as a kid because brendan is me obviously uh obviously uh, and they're talking about like writing books and the book of Iona, which is commissioned and starred by St. Columkill and his magical third eye, or maybe it's a third arm. No, it's definitely a third <laughs> eye. That was a fun little visual thing. Mm -hmm. He like grows an arm and then he like checks it off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a book so holy that sinners will like be burned by it. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, yeah, it's on Iona, an island. And Brendan's like, islands are easy to attack. And then he has a dream of Vikings and their quest for gold. Uh, you know, also Scandinavian countries, they do ask their guests to leave at dinner time. So they also deserve it. <laughs> they deserve this representation. Uh, they got frozen. Okay. They're okay. Uh, I so watched Vikings. <laughs> yeah. You watched the, the Northmen. I there, did that too. was a movie. Oh yeah, with Alexander Skarsgård, it's on my list to watch. Yeah. Uh, I hear he gets kind of naked, so. So that's that's why. Um, but I have already seen him naked. I saw True Blood before, oh, okay. so. Mm -hmm. um, Got an update. Memories. I was gonna say something. Oh yeah, and Vikings. Uh, you know, obviously, we'll talk about how they look in this movie. But I was like, oh, is that is that Ragnar Lothbrok? Yeah. Character from the the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was again a joke for me uh nobody else was i appreciate house. it i appreciate thank it you, thank you <laughs> yeah my cat didn't even look at me he was like <laughs> what okay was talking to herself again great love that mm -hmm. uh the abbot is like brendan you're so responsible it takes you hours to do a simple task uh and you know what i defend this child because <laughs> it used to take me like four hours to do the dishes when i was like his age yeah because i would distracted. get distracted and i would be playing in the water <laughs> yeah i'd be playing same. pretend as i'm doing dishes <laughs> yeah. and like i was so offended for benin because but then i also had to remember like he's obviously living in a time where he has to be more mature for his age yeah. which sucks but he still has, unlike the previous movie we watched on the podcast, this movie loves loves a sense of curiosity and wonder. Celebrates it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that that's kind of a, a conflict between the practicality and the whimsicalness, which is a common conflict in Irish literature, actually. You know, mm -hmm. because the Irish have stereotyped as both being, like, you know, hard working class people and also, like, whimsical, like... yeah poetry lovers and drinkers and you know so yeah uh but yeah he's like he just wants to talk about his wall his wall boner is so big uh and brendan is like i have no interest i'm 12 you know <laughs> uh but he does want to do it to protect people from vikings this abbot yeah uh and he sees brother aiden arrive uh 
the person they were just talking about, St. Colum Kill's disciple from Iona. He arrives with his cat, Prangerban. Best character, honestly. <laughs> Love that mean, cat. That cat was, the, but the name was just so fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> I had to like, go look it up and be like, what is this name? And then found uh, out about the poem. Yeah, there's a little poem. My cat is literally getting into stuff right as we talk about this. Petita, no. Petita, <laughs> no. My cat's probably getting into something out there, but that's Lyle's problem. Petita. He's clawing at the door. Oh. <laughs> no closed doors. <laughs> no walls. We usually don't. She gets so mad. <laughs> uh, and so he arrives and Aiden's or Brendan is so excited to see Aiden and he's talking about, oh, I got here for Iona. And uh they go to the scriptorium. He's like, Oh, this is great. And Brendan like asks him questions and he's like, Oh, the smallest, most curious monk. Which is kind of like, Yeah, why is he already a monk? <laughs> he's well, yeah. he dressed like him too. Like he was kind of yeah. dressed like all of them, you know. I'm like, mm-hmm. I was very confused when he first came on the screen. I'm like, is is that a kid or is he supposed to be? older yeah. like i don't understand what's happening and it looked like he had like piercings or something and he so does have piercings. it was a little yeah. confusing yeah. i do think you know i do think they did send kids that that for a right. while like it was kind of like like i mean they do that in other cultures too for sure yeah. like when you, you're like nine ten years old yeah it's like your apprenticeship because like yeah yeah mom and dad can only feed so many mouths you go yeah, yeah quite literally yeah but then uh, it was confusing because be he was he looked like he was being monk like and then but his uncle was mad. He's kind of hanging around the scriptorium. So I'm like, is he is he supposed to be a monk or not? Maybe supposed he's to be a monk. Like monk in training and his his specific thing is like to serve his uncle. Yeah. That's kind of what I read from it. It's like he's yeah. always like calling after him and he's always doing chores for the abbot. He's like so. he's the next abbot essentially right right right. and they're and the monks here kind of like how Jon snow was a steward and he did not like that but it's because he was being groomed quite literally they say the word groomed being groomed to be the next leader of you know castle block i mean there was a wall build that wall (laughs) no no (laughs) that one also had a good purpose too no, I should say it man that wall. Man that wall. Anyway, because it was uh, already built. Yeah, it was constructed. Ice. So the yeah, the monks were the, the abbot is like, you need to get back to building. You keep spending all this time in the scriptorium with your books. Uh yeah. And I'm like, you're a monk, you devote your life to a book, but okay. Uh <laughs> and then more, I guess, in fairness, the things in the book, not the literal book itself. Uh but yeah, uh, so Aiden, he's like, oh, brother Aiden, look at these plans I have for this wall. And it's like, no one wants to hear about your wall. No yeah, one no. wants to hear about your CrossFit. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no one wants to hear about your intermittent fasting right now. Like, and Yeah, because like, isn't this where Brendan's like over, like listening to them talking? He says the brother, or brother Aiden is like, get fine food for the cat. Mm-hmm. yeah and, and so brennan goes and then the cat kind of leads him back yeah to the abbot's he quarters and he overhears he does drop some eaves and he's basically like i don't want to hear about your wall because you need to just like pack up and leave like yeah they're gonna no wall is going to stop these vikings yeah because he's like you brought the northman here and he's like you know when the northman come there's no choice but to run you know yeah uh, and he's like, the, we have to stay. He's like the they'll learned they're like outside. There's Vikings, pagans, Crom worshippers, or as uh, Autocrat keeps wanting to say, Chrome worshippers. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, they'll learn to strut tr- through the strength of our walls. They will learn to trust the strength of our faith. Mm-hmm. It's I, uh, powerful. That yeah, very powerful, very GOP. And- <laughs> and it but it also does like really just like characterize him very well like this is why i'm doing this it's yeah. both it's to preserve our culture that we're we have here yeah. and, and our people he says a wall uh, to save civilization mm-hmm. yeah at the beginning of it you you're kind of i don't know i was like i don't know what this guy's deal is with this wall but then after they explained all that and you know because i didn't realize at first where brother aiden was in the beginning you know in the intro part of it 
Right. And then when I saw him show up, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it now. <laughs> but then you were kind of like, well, I'm kind of on his side too. Like, if you're yeah. going to try to protect everybody, makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. running, it's like, well, where do they go? Yeah. You, you know, you gotta it's, just you're going to be running forever. Someplace. Yeah. So it's. You're going to be running until they find a way to Christianize the Vikings, which is basically how that happened. <laughs> I think. I don't know. I'm not an expert in Scandinavian history. So there could have been many more steps in between, right. you know uh before the establishment of those kingdoms though there were kingdoms you know sweden was a kingdom descended yeah. from freyr as we've talked about him a few times uh i don't remember anything from my middle ages history class in college it was a good class but i don't remember anything <laughs> <laughs> there were vikings i knew that <laughs> yeah that's the thing is it's kind of like i have a very rough timeline but sometimes there's gaps where i'm like okay i can't remember exactly what's going on in here at this specific time uh yeah I just have to wait till Dana Schwartz on Noble Blood talks about it. And I'm like, okay, I got that in there again. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, so they're, uh, you know, they're, Aiden goes back to the scriptorium and is like, oh, Brendan, you have all these questions. And he's like showing him the work and the book. And he's like, am I going to be burned up? And it's like, no, you know. And he's like, you should get these berries. Maybe other than eavesdropping on my conversations, you should get berries. And uh, Brendan is like, I've never been outside the wall. And he was like, you are so pale. Please go outside. But he's like, <laughs> Touch grass. <laughs> yeah, literally. But he's like, you know, like you gotta, if you want to like make beautiful art, you gotta like see the natural world. You gotta yeah. understand things. Very uh, Walt Whitman. Yeah. Is it him or Thoreau whose pond I went to? Don't remember. Uh, uh, Walden Pond oh. is Thoreau? Yeah. No. Oh, wait. It's, I think it's Thoreau. I think it's I Thoreau. Went, I went to a pond in Massachusetts. I had to, get I can, a, I had I to bug Google a friend this. with a car to get there. <laughs> oh, that's what kind of sucked about, you know, Thoreau. Yes. Yeah. Walden Pond. I mean, I miss public transit a lot in LA, but I do. Yeah, that was that was the thing. It was like very it hard sucked. to get out of the city. Yeah, like if you wanted to go touch grass, <laughs> I would yeah. have to like go to the arboretum, like take three different trails to go to what was a uh, organized park a garden. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> so Brendan is torn up by this. It's very it's it's giving Rapunzel entangled. Like. Uh, I don't yeah. disappoint my uncle, but I want to go outside. I don't want to touch grass. Uh, <laughs> and uh, if he sneaks out the next day with Ponger Bon, it's his guide, uh, and he sneaks into the forest, and it's spooky, it's scary, it's different and new, and he's getting attacked by wolves. The well, wolf- when he first goes in, it's really magical because yeah. he's like, "Oh, this is awesome!" And mm-hmm. then the wolves start chasing yeah. him, and it gets y- darkish. The the wolves. I uh, can't catch a break on this podcast. No, wolves are people. evil. <laughs> Orcs are riding you. You're attacking Belle. You're attacking this little ginger boy. Uh, <laughs> but the cat sneaks off. Mm-hmm. And so Brendan has blue eyes, right? And so the cat sneaks off and then comes back with a big white wolf. You know, there's two uh-huh. wolves inside of you. Uh, and she, I think I made that joke already. Never mind. But uh, yes, you did. She, <laughs> one of them is Ashling. One of them yeah. is Ashling. Yeah, she's the wolf on those wolf T-shirts that were really popular that one time. Uh, so she sent basically sends the wolves away, uh, mm-hmm. and he, trying to. So he's like intrigued. He's like gets off, and then because uh, he's on a little rock thing, and it's like mm-hmm. kind of sacred circle of stones. Yeah. Um. There, you know, some people do say that Stonehenge was originally in Ireland, but Merlin moved it. So, uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. When was that episode of the show? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be, it only seemed like the pilot, but uh, <laughs> it was the second episode. <laughs> second episode, yeah. Never, uh, I didn't even see the pilot. But yeah, so he, uh, so then. He's like, okay, what is this? And then the wolf turns, reveals itself in like a blink in the mist to be Aisling, this 
white haired long little green eyed girl and the cat has one blue eye one green eye huh so the cat quite literally is like the connection of like the like the christian and the pagan worlds oh the liminal being i'm an academic (laughs) wow (laughs) interesting i didn't even make that connection but yeah and then she takes him around the forest. He's like, yeah. I need these berries. And she's um, like, you My can favorite go. part of this sequence, though, he was like walking around and he was like, huh, I don't even know what it, this oak tree looks like. And I was yeah. like, oh my God, he doesn't because he's never seen the outside. <laughs> yeah. But well, then she's like, have you ever forever. climbed a tree? And he's like, oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> and she's like, bushes. So mm-hmm. Okay, can I quickly say? Yeah. Ashley reminds me of Danny Phantom. And Penguin Bond later when he transforms, I was like, this is literally Danny Phantom. You know, the, anyway, the style, I can see that. The, it, it's pretty much just her. Yeah. And I think it's probably the white hair. And the green, bright And eyes. the fact that she turns the cat into a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, also, uh, it's interesting in this scene, is she's like, okay, just leave. She's like, you're probably here to like get food or whatever. He's like, I'm not here for food. You yeah. know, and she's like, go back to your parents. He's like, I don't have parents. parents. And she's like, oh, me either. Oh my God, orphan. Yeah. <laughs> orphan friend. And so she's like, okay, you just have to promise to leave and I'll help you. Yeah. Uh, but then they have a great time together. They climb. They see all these cute, it's a. It's my favorite sequence of the movie. Like as all yeah. the trees are like intertwined and he's like mm-hmm. struggling to climb and you see the boohos. The boohos, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, those boohos, and um, there's uh, the, the two beetles. The it's probably a reference to a, to a specific part, but they're of the art. But there are two beetles recognize each other, and it's like, yeah, okay. it was kind of random. <laughs> he like gets to do like kid things, like yeah. in this in this sequence, and I like that. It's nice. And he, he can't he can't be a kid where he is. Yeah, he it's like the whimsy of the natural world, you know, and he gets the berries and she's like, Don't worry, I told the bees not to sting you. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, Me and Jerry Seinfeld, we go way back. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Uh so yeah, she, you know, he gets the berries and then they go back and she's like, You can come back anytime. <laughs> you know? She had a good time. Like, yeah, she's like, this is fun. I have a friend now. Yeah. Uh, so he goes and he's with the berries and they do little, their little like like potions and they make the green ink and it's like but wait you still we didn't see that uh oh the he calm goes to the cave, cave. He, yeah he goes by and she's like this is a place of suffering like yeah. you need to leave here and he's like he's like so curious he's like uncle says Quam isn't real and he can't hurt you and she's like mm, no 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 um he obliterated my entire family and all my people so, so i think i know better yeah uh because it's she like the darkness is sneaking out and yeah, she it's, that was creepy yeah it's kind of like a tentacles she slams the gate the like one of the statues over it yeah mm-hmm. um but then is this is this she had like that old look to her face like that was it, i no, think that's the later end, that's yeah. later oh, okay end, yeah. like when he's going when she's like holding open the gate that's very bionical creepy. yeah i can't uh, wait to talk about that yeah um but yeah then he yeah he gets the berries and then they go and make i literally was like brother aiden be like uh breaking bad up here making <laughs> making ink <laughs> And uh, they're having a they're having a grand old time, and they kind of keep doing this. Where the abbot is like, "Where are you?" And Brendan's like, oh, "I'm busy." <laughs> and Brendan is going out into the woods, experiencing life, hanging out with Ashling, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, he's also training with Brother Aiden and like making art. Yeah. But also, little bell guy at the docks gets shot because the vikings are coming i had to stop myself i literally almost said the mormons are coming no idea why. the mormons are coming <laughs> hello my name is elder price uh, so the, the... uh and those boats like coming out of the mist yeah so scary it's really scary and they're burning down villages and like you're yeah. seeing like these villagers like screaming running screaming crying throwing up screaming crying getting murdered uh <laughs> 
It's going to be crying and pillaged. <laughs> and they're running and like you see a family of refugees yeah. arrive. See, this is why we don't hate the Abbot because when the refugees arrive, he welcomes the wall them, opens, open arms. And they come in. Yeah. And, and you get like a couple groups of refugees coming mm-hmm. and that's when he knows like, okay, they're getting closer. to speed this wall up. Mm-hmm. So but the, you know, the Brendan's learning, but Aiden's like, you're never going to, like, be an expert until you, like, if you have the eye of column kill. And he's like, oh, I have it. And he's, like, rummaging through his stuff and the cat, meow, you know, <laughs> and he's like, oh, the Vikings must have destroyed it or the Northmen. Because um, yeah. they always call them the Northmen. I think Northmen, they say Vikings. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they said Northmen. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, and they're like, well, where did column kill get the eye? And they say he won it. From Krom Kruik, the dark one. Yeah. The and then he's crime. like, but then there's also this other story that's a bit more realistic. Yeah. But it but the dark turns one. out. I love how they say dark in this movie. The dark. <laughs> <laughs> I should have uh, practiced my Irish accent. Damn I know. It. I'm bad at it. I cannot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was on my trip, people started trying to like do the accent. Like they would just do it when they're talking to people and be like, oh God, this is cringe. So embarrassed. I think I would speak more American. Yeah, I literally did. Me and my some of my friends had a bit where we were like a Southern family. Like we made up all this like, <laughs> drama. <laughs> Can I get an iced tea? <laughs> we didn't make wait staff. Like we didn't make customer service oh, okay. deal with the bit. But we had the bit amongst ourselves. Gotta, gotta, gotta. <laughs> yeah. Look um, at those waves. They're just <laughs> crashing on the <laughs> cliff face. <laughs> I wish I had an iced tea. <laughs> there you go. You know, because, you know, it. the Irish are some of the most friendly European, like, countries to visit, at mm. least Western European. So it's like, you don't need to antagonize it. Like, Right. Yeah. Please don't make it worse for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, That's why France hates us. Yeah. Well. One of the reasons. <laughs> one of the many reasons well they funded our revolution so yeah and then what i learned from hamilton is that we did not pay the favor no well we kind of we made a deal with uh louis and marie and yeah you know, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, died yeah. yeah uh yeah we did not help out should i do the anymore. rap should i should yeah. I do the rap <laughs> uh so okay, so they... in a basket. Would you like to take it out and ask it? That's I'm not doing the rest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, their daughter did try and get that her dad declared a saint, and they were like, mm, "He was killed for political reasons." Like you can't argue it's religion. Like he was very Marie nice. Therese. Yeah. Girl, girl, no. She... I know you love your family, but no. She was traumatized. <laughs> Yeah, who's literally was. a princess locked in a tower? Rapunzel girl. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, if you're saying that they were just making up things in Ireland, then why not? <laughs> yeah, she's like, you know what? I'm making. Francis, like, we have rules. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. So the eye of Colin Kill. So he goes to the he goes to Asling and is like, I'm going to Crom. And she's like, uh, the dark one? No, he killed my people. He killed my family. He killed my mother, my father. You know, you can't do it. And he's like, I need All it my cousins, the... my aunties, everybody. Yeah. Like, we, I need to do it to... And see, this is where the thing that they don't explain gets a little, like, what the book is. Because he's like... Because why the book is so important requires right this religious context right of, like he yes. believes this is like the good news like the gospel and this book is so important and i don't think a modern audience universally would be like yes i thought it was a coloring book <laughs> yeah, the, a modern audience a is not told what it is and b wouldn't necessarily be like yeah it's worth putting this girl like the fairy girl and this boy in danger for you know right. and i'm not gonna make a judgment call in the for this character though it is that important Yes, and that makes yeah. it important to us. Yeah, and he's like, because yeah. the book will turn the darkness into light. Yeah, I, I, and I think that's enough. I think it's effective because yeah, it's even enough, though I didn't, it's a I was seventy five like, minute I have a question, movie. What is it? <laughs> yeah. But I'm also like, I buy enough of this. You yeah, know? yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a short movie. We don't need. I'll get to that. We are not <laughs> stepping on the keys today. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it's a short movie and you just need the like this means a lot to these characters and this idea that they're under attack from the Northmen and they need... did it make a sound for you <laughs> no <laughs> how dare you i had to send a message to the people uh, I had to send a meow message she was writing her own book of cows yeah <laughs> exactly the gospel of the past the cat goes <laughs> uh yeah it's uh this i there's also this idea that these people are very beleaguered and they need something to give them like hope and something to believe in uh, yeah and so he kind of connects to her that like your people died my people can suffer if i don't get this book done kind of thing and so yeah. she's like okay i'll help you i'll help yeah so she and it's i like the way she does it it's, just, it's not like a. it's just like i'll help you like i don't want to like, do this but... she's like fine <laughs> and so it's scary like she has to like lift it up and the darkness is pulling him in and this is when she gets the old lady face she's like a like a zombie kind yeah. of yeah and she's like, like it's like she's like decaying and then she's I think, like i think it flashed to it though earlier because but like for a split second yeah where she looks up um, and she first says the name she looks up because her yeah. like lips were all like creep so because then oh, i was like I oh god that. Did this like? Is she gonna be some old lady person? <laughs> Did it suck out her soul? Like, what's happening? Uh, and then it was like, oh, everything's fine. You should come back to the forest. I was like, well, uh. <laughs> but this time definitely was really creepy with the black. Just yeah, like, yeah. she like turns her head. up everywhere. Yeah, yeah, she's like turn the darkness into light. You know, she tells him to do that, and he is sucked into this like very Legend of Zelda boss battle. Cool. I thought it was like the the Matrix code. It was okay. well because they kept having those little yeah they kept having like little germ looking things sparkling around everywhere throughout yeah, the movie. Yeah, right? like he's in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean it seemed like he was underwater or something. Yeah, or like yeah he was. Is underwater. this like a liminal space? I, uh, I don't know. Was he was he <laughs> uh, uh, books? I got a book here. Um, yeah, no, like, if he was underwater, he would have to hold his breath. But I guess not because this is fantastical. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, it definitely yeah, had a fantastical strange. feel. And the, yeah. the Crom is basically like a maze. Like, if you ever, did you ever have maze books as a kid? Where you would like, right? Like, 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 a, a, maze like a coloring like book, but it's a the, maze. The, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so he is. I thought it was like a game of snake. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Because yeah. he—that's what I thought was going to happen. He was going to be like actually like eating himself. Because this well, he's trying, he, he, he does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Quam is trying to eat him, and he makes this. He finds a a piece of chalk from his pocket. Chalk and he, zone. <laughs> and he makes. I a wrote circle. Danny Phantom meets Chalk Zone meets Chamber of Secrets meets the Matrix. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's kind of like the Basilisk. Yeah, I mean he's because and he makes the draw the circle. And it traps the snake and it starts eating itself. And he ripped out the eye, which is this like yeah. circle jewel. Mm-hmm. And uh, looks he like le- a prism. Yeah. yeah. Like a magnifying glass. Yeah. But also, yeah, a kaleidoscopy. Mm-hmm. And he leaves and he sees there's something there and he's like, Ashling. Uh, but he doesn't seem too pressed. Yeah. About what happened mm-hmm. to his friend. No, he's like, I'm going to yeah. go back now. <laughs> Yeah. Like thanks, and it was Women's History Month, but I got stuff with the boys. Uh, it, yeah, uh, it's Women History Month, not fairy. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! And uh, he, yeah, Fairy Month is May, obviously. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so he's wait. I totally miss the tower. The tower part. Yeah, because I was. I, before- this was before because he gets I'm doing oh, yeah. a glee boot. I'm doing a glee boot and going out of order. Uh, <laughs> so he gets when he's like running around in between after the montage, the abbot is like the Northmen are coming and you just do these drawings. And so he locks him in the cellar until he learns to see reason because he knows he's been sneaking out. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Brother Tang is gonna bring him his meals. And so we get more mm-hmm. he's like in there and they're building the wall. And then Ashling it comes to find him because she's like, you haven't come to see me. Where are you? And he's like, I'm yeah. trapped in here. And she's like, well, how do we get you out? 
He's like, the key is here. And so she grabs Pangraban. And she sings and a little sings song. sings a little song. And it's a little spooky, but also a little cute. And Pangarban turns into a ghost. A little spirit cat. Loved it. I loved it. How do you feel, my I feel like, thinking of I it? feel, no, no, I just feel like every time we say his name, I feel like all of us need to, like, in chorus. <laughs> <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. Pong- 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 <laughs> love it love it uh, yeah and so he he goes around and he gets the key <laughs> he goes around. He zooms up yeah. the stairs yeah he While does she's he saying... gets the key then they unlock it Brendan and gets then out. he puts the key back yeah he covers the tracks and that's when they go yeah. and they fight and he fights Krom and he gets to die yeah mm-hmm. And then he comes back and he's like, let's do this book. So he, with the details, he does this super detailed little circle. Which, you know, for a 12-year-old boy, very impressive. Very, very mm-hmm. impressive. Incredibly for anyone. Because, oh, we had, uh, on International Women's Day, we had this thing at work where they were doing with these crafts. And they're like, you better go. And I was like, okay. But they you were like. support they- the women. They were the kind of crafts that stressed me out because it was like you had to like do a mandala and they're like, it's meditative. And I'm like, all I can think about is how I'm bad at drawing. <laughs> and I can't do a little pattern like this. Or like, <laughs> yeah, I had there's like bending wire. I'm like, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> so it's for the women. You gotta show solidarity. I came. Crafts. I attended. I looked at the thing, was about to have a breakdown, left. <laughs> not an actual breakdown but i was like i'm stressed i don't <laughs> <laughs> so very impressive i could not do that so good on you brendan mm-hmm. uh and then all the monks are like oh my gosh it's amazing look at him go uh because earlier he wipes when the abbot is like what have you been doing he wipes the makeup off or the art the paint on, off the, on pig. the pig and it's like the pig has makeup. And it looks like a clown. Yeah. And the other pig is laughing at the other yeah, pig. Yeah. Uh so good. And so they uh so he's uh he's that he's like a major apprentice now. Like he did this. And then the abbot is like the Northmen are like here. So yeah. you're he's so mad he's like you're gonna stay in your precious scriptorium with your precious books. And then he sends some of the monks to the chapel with the people. Some of the people are in their houses. He's kind of standing by like the cross in the square. And then Brother Tang's in the tower. He spent he also so much locked time. Them, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's people. He... The people are locked into the tower, right? Well, no, no not he, yet. He not locks yet. Brendan. Yeah, Brendan. Yeah, they yeah, get locked Brendan in the scriptorium. Is... Yeah. But he spent all that time planning the wall that he didn't plan a plan of action of like what they were going to do when they eventually came to that wall. Like should have been like, all right, places everybody, you know, yeah, and like, go you- like everyone goes into the tower because also as people are going into, is it into the tower? The, yeah. the steps collapse. And that's why there's just people left on the Because ground. they're supposed to go one at a time. And, like, and they had to go. Yeah. 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 So much for your plans. Well, it's, I mean, it's- I- Oh, I was gonna say I, I took it to mean that the tower just wasn't finished, and so it was just like the scaffolding inside. Yeah, yeah. 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 I also think he didn't plan though for like, you know, when you were sieging a castle, you'd have like boiling oil, yeah, have, like archery, Stuff. something to to like deter because a wall is just a wall. You need to get people away from the wall, and so you have to do things to do that. Yeah 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 so yeah it's yeah it's sort of like i understood where he's coming from but it's also like but you didn't plan anything else i think they weren't had any weapons yeah they're just unprepared like they came too fast yeah yeah and uh so the they're like shooting fire arrows and so people are fleeing their homes and including little little baby ginger girl (laughs) yeah uh and then he gets hit with an arrow and the abbot and then yeah uh gotta hurt and then they're everyone's running up because they're like and he's like no it's too fast it's too soon one at a time and then it collapses and so like things are on fire and people are collapsing in the flames uh-huh. and 
the Vikings burst in and the Abbot is basically like, oh my gosh, I locked my nephew, my 12 year old nephew, nephew in, in a building with an old, like decrepit, like decaying man, essentially. Like, he's getting That's too burning old down. to drop. Yeah. And so he's crawling towards him and then the Viking slashes because he wants the gold. Like that's the one thing you ever hear them say is this gold. Gold. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then so they're like burning everything and then the people like Tang and some of the people get locked in the tower but a bunch of people they die. They're dying. And yeah. so Brendan and Aiden or Brendan's like we need to make ink and Aiden's like oh what? And so they make a a poof. Like yeah. a smart yeah. it's a distraction. Mm-hmm. And Diversion. They, yeah. Looks stealth. Great. Rogue skills. Stealth. Stealth plus one. They rolled yeah. a nat 20 on that one. Yeah. Good job, Brendan. Brendan. a level in rogue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so they're like sneaking out. And then he's like, oh, my uncle. And Aiden's like, you just got to run. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the. And the abbot sees them leaving. No. Sad. I don't think he does. I no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Brendan he called- died. No, no, he, he thinks call after they're them? trapped in there. He thinks they're burning in the in the building. Because yeah, he thinks oh, they're burning. He was, trying to, he was trying to release them because they were locked in there. And he but doesn't. But when he got shot with the arrow, he's on the ground. Isn't he staring at the scriptorium he as just, they go in? He just sees the smoke and he hears yeah. from the smoke Brendan call out to his uncle. Oh, yeah. yeah, I completely misinterpreted that. I thought he was watching them run away. No, that's why at the end he was he was like, oh, he's just a boy. lost my nephew and he died and all. Oh. Yeah, he thought they they went up and. Yeah. Yeah. I will so... say one thing I thought was really interesting, not related to anything, but the tower, the fact that the the door was all high because the steps led up, but then it collapsed, you know, and so it was like, oh. it kept them safe though, kind of, you know. It yeah. Did, yeah, it was. I think that's like they should have. I think the plan was get everyone in there and then you release the stairs. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, I don't feel like I've really seen that in anything. So I was like, oh, that's it's why. It's a unique plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and the, the other people are like praying in the chapel. There's like Latin chant and the yeah. Vikings just boom in. It's like, we hear it like screams. <laughs> it goes to yeah. Work. And like, we don't see anyone actually getting slaughtered. I want to be really yeah. clear for anyone who like hasn't seen the movie yet. Uh, but it it's a lot of like diversion of what you're seeing. It's a lot of uh, basically you imagining the worst because what you're hearing um, is like people screaming and you see the the dark like Northmen mm. stalking around and stuff, but you're not seeing well, anyone like the- actually being massacred. It's it's really effective because it they do like the whole shadow kind of style. Yes, like the style of animation changes for those scenes and like the colors and everything, and so yeah. it's it, you you feel it very emotionally. I feel it's, like it's very yes. black and red, and what is otherwise yeah. like green browns like peaceful. Yes, movie. like even the fairy is like a white, you know, like mm-hmm. a calming. And this even is like just like the grays and, and the stones, like a mm-hmm. calming color, like on the wall and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but the sounds and everything too, I felt like were really creepy. The music is intense. It's a upsetting. It's you're like, wow, they're all dying. And it, it does show you why these people have a need for hope and you know why yeah. they need to, you know, because there's so little they can do against this better equipped enemy. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it where was I going with? I don't know. It's uh it's dark. Uh Oh yeah, there's all the ravens too, and I'm like, this could be a oh, reference yeah. to well, the Morrigan, the goddess of war, or it could oh, be a yeah. reference to Odin had ravens that sat on yes. his shoulders. Or it could be both. It could be both, you know. Uh, so this idea that because ravens are also, you know, sometimes they're scavengers, mm-hmm. you know, so it's kind of this idea of like waiting for the calm after yeah. the storm so they can eat. Or like even the fact that these people are putting together a livelihood, they're making art, they're making beautiful things, and the Vikings are just taking it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Brendan and Aiden sneak away, they're running through the wintry woods, and uh, a Viking comes and he takes the book and he rips off the cover and he sends the pages, but the- Oh wait, we didn't, 
that when the abbot gets really angry a few scenes back he takes the page that brendan was working on yeah so he 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 rips it out of the book and so he has it he has it yeah i think that because it was on it was on the frame for him to draw onto mm-hmm. or something yeah. wasn't it yeah. let me take that so there the vikings go to an attack but then the wolves I hate to redeem themselves. They step in. They chase off the Vikings before they can kill Brendan and Aiden. And then they're collecting the pages. And he sees the white wolf. And she gives him the page. She's like, thanks for checking on me. (laughs) Not better. (laughs) Yeah, that's why she doesn't turn into herself to say (laughs) hi. She's like, I'm staying a wolf. Yeah, she's like, obviously, I don't want you to be murdered. But, like, you could text. (laughs) Hey, you you okay? Yeah, literally uh, the letter U, the letter O K yeah. question. No, no question mark. Yeah. No. Uh so they go off and they, they did this a couple times earlier, but they do like the kind of triptych thing where it's like the three arches and it's like mm-hmm. them traveling through different terrains as Brendan gets older and Aiden also gets older, but in like a a la um Hakuna Matata and the Lion King, yes. how he gets older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, I love because I think the movie knows when to do these scenes really stylized where it's like the walking is inspired by the old medieval Celtic art and you see it like feels like it's weird, it's trippy, but like Mm -hmm. it knows like, okay, this is an action scene. This needs to look like you need to be able to place yourself, you know, and what's physically happening. It knows when to kind of be more grounded, more traditional. And often in like walking scenes are kind of, like montages they know how to make it a little more like artsy and like Mm -hmm. magical uh which i thought that was something i noticed this time was it's like they know when to stick to the tried and true and when they can play right Mm -hmm. Uh, and so they uh he becomes an expert uh illuminator and he completes Mm -hmm. the book to turn darkness into light aiden brother aiden passes away and he, you know, completes the work. He's in a cottage sharing it with all these people. You know, that cozy little cottage. Yeah. <laughs> it's all crammed to this little dome. Uh, this just movie has so many good visuals. Yeah. Uh, and he eventually makes his way back to Kells, you know, and he, he's got a beard now. He did, he has a similar glow up to uh, Chris Kringle and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Okay, have sure. Have you seen that one, Hannah? Uh, I believe I've seen parts of it. Yeah, the one with the winter warlock so. and school teacher. Yeah, I yeah. don't think I've seen it all the way through, though. Yeah, but he has a thing. He has, he, yeah, he's a ginger. And he gets a beard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. he's, so he's, you know, he's a, he's a full, he's a real grown monk now. Uh, and <laughs> He's a real boy. <laughs> he's a real boy. <laughs> he gave me Obi-Wan Kenobi vibes, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he, he comes in with the hood, too. Yeah. yeah. And does he, he, does he have a white robe? now yeah it's yeah white. yeah and so, so he yeah he sees ass he sees the wolf he sees ashling, ashling sees yeah in the woods and then he's he just calls her ashling you know he's just chatting yeah. with her and she's like i'm still a wolf but then she at the last she shows him kells and she appears yeah. and she's her child fairy self because she doesn't age you know yeah and she laughs you know she's happy to see him yeah uh and so he arrives at the monastery where, you know, Brother Tang is comforting the abbot, who's just like, he was just a boy. Yeah. I keep thinking, is it Finding Nemo where the starfish is like, please, he's only a boy when they're doing the volcano <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, you know, he it's just a boy. Like, I'm supposed to protect him. You know, he's suffering. Uh, he went through some pretty crazy traumatic stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean... Somehow he survived a arrow shot to the the heart or the chest. And being hacked with a sword. Yeah. And so he's... he really pulled through. He Oh I yeah, mean... when they when they when they showed that, that's right. When um because you were you obviously he'd been shot <laughs> and whatnot yeah. by the arrows. It was like, is he going to make it? And then they did show him being like, Oh my god, he's still alive. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was that's nice. when we find out that little ginger girl made it. Yeah, little ginger girl made it. <laughs> And he's, I mean, but I remember shots from earlier. He's like this huge guy with huge muscles pulling up huge rocks. So he, yeah, he had basically a, shirtless. Yeah, 
Uh, the monk equivalent of shirtless, which is like sleeveless. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and so he, but he's old now. He's like very small, you know. And he's like, oh, and then he's holding on to the little picture, and then Brendan's like, hey, uncle. Casually, so yeah, casually. too casually. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest criticism of this film. Brendan's just a little too casual when he comes back. Could have come back before, but yeah, I could have sent a letter or something. Like <laughs> Brendan is not good lie. at communication. He is not good at keeping no. tabs on people. <laughs> Too busy writing the book, not letters yeah, like, to let you know I'm alive. I have to yeah. illustrate this entire bo- <laughs> entire four gospels, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he get so he looks at the book and he sees all the designs and the vibrant colors and the nature and basically all the stuff Brendan has learned into the art and it's like wow. Really? Yeah. well because he thought it had been destroyed too right yeah. he thought the yeah. book had been destroyed too and then he's like no because he calls it it was the book of iona and he's, and he's like it's the, the book, book of Kells. Kells. yeah so that uh is the movie way faster to sum up than like 2017 beauty and the beast i mean it's not even 90 minutes it's like <laughs> yeah. just i mean it's 75 not even including yeah, credits and stuff including credits beginning credits and end credits <laughs> incredible it's i love and I they love pack it. so much into it yeah there were a couple spaces which we can talk about where i felt like i would have i could have used a little more mm. like uh but i think again it still tells an effective story yeah and like you don't get bored you're in it it's 75 minutes and you're like boom you know and I mean, we're obviously gonna start with vibes and aesthetic. I would like to start with the visuals because to be honest, I don't think I would have been that interested in this film if it was not for the amazing animation style they have. It's so Same. just so interesting to look at. And then they're changing it up and tweaking it in different sequences, like you said. And it's just like, it's so good. Yeah, the style is like the selling point of the movie. Like the story yeah. is adequate. But yeah. the like the the visuals and like the world you feel in like it's such a unique flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed how they just adapted it depending on the scene. That was great to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the music could be a little spooky, but could be yeah. a little also fun. Like a mix of you had Latin chant, you had Irish music. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Panga Bond song. Panga Bond song, which they played again <laughs> in the credits, like a Love. Disney movie where they play their big song. Like, yeah. We're back. I mean, it was we all know you loved it. Throughout, throughout the whole movie, they didn't have anything like that except right there. I guess yes. Magic is singing. I mean, I, yeah. I'll take it. So I do remember, like, Rafa came in as, like, that was playing. He's like, can you turn this up? I don't like the sound. Like, not the movie, like, the credits. He always wants me to turn off movie credits. He he does not like scores. And I, I but this one I was like, this is my culture. He's like, mm, you're from America. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Irish music. I know. Yeah. It's uh the Punger Bond song. It also had uh is it Gaelic? Yeah. Is that the mm-hmm. language? So they also I wish that had been translated because I I again I watched it with the CC and they didn't yeah. translate it or anything. It just said singing in native language. I was like, cool, thank you. Well, because he was Rafa was like, I don't even know what they're saying. And I'm like, well, it's you know, it's not English, it's it's yeah. Gaelic, Gaelic or Irish. And he's like, Well, you don't speak that. I'm like, Yeah, well, because of colonialism, okay. The same reason <laughs> you speak Spanish, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can still appreciate the beauty. <laughs> yeah. It's I think, coming back. I think, um, it was almost a dead language, but I, no, no, no. It's coming back. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think the words were, I think they might have been the poem. Just enough. I think oh. so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, kind of you said it was a poem. <laughs> yeah. Irish is one of those languages well, that, where they will just play on the fact that it sounds magical. <laughs> and sometimes what they're saying is not really related. Or like, mm-hmm. like you know, like because Celtic women will use a certain like the Mogirama, you know, thing, and they. I mean, it sounds great. It sounds like such an epic fantasy thing, and it's 
but they're thinking about like love and stuff but like the song is about like i'm a warrior like i'm a way to war or something like that i eat potatoes <laughs> like yeah I get yeah it. well i know potatoes, potato song <laughs> potatoes are a new world crop though not native to uh, ireland they were brought there and then they were cheap and easy for poor people to eat interesting because okay I mean, where'd the potato I, come from the what history? <laughs> oh they brought the yeah. swamp so huh. I'm going to do a little, I'm going to keep it short because I could go on a tangent here. They invented, <laughs> the English for the Irish invented renting, not really a hundred, renting, but it was, so before like peasants, you lived on the land of your Lord and you yeah. didn't have to pay because you took care of the land and they took some of the crops. Yes. But the Irish had to not just pay crops, they also had to pay rent. So what you're saying is it's the English's fault. Yeah. So they needed to grow. I stand cheap. by that. They needed to grow cheap potatoes so they had something to eat and you didn't need a lot of land to grow potatoes. So you could grow them and you had something to eat that was relatively nutritious. And then the other potatoes. Yeah. yeah. And then if the landlord wanted to decide they want to do sheep, they would just like tear down all your houses and kick you out on Christmas in the rain and let you die. Love that. Yeah, and then they come to America. And then be persecuted in America. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, you know, become part of Good like uh, but the part, police become... and become part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. But say Patrick's Day. Have mobs <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. I mean, the American dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh do we, so let's talk about our characters. Yeah. Do we our protagonist Brendan? Do we root Sweetie. for Sweetie. Of mm -hmm. course. Again, I had no idea what the fuck this book actually was, <laughs> but I was like, it apparently it means something to you, and I think he's just so uh, lovable from the very beginning that he just you know anything he was like, yeah, I I need to do this, I need to, I care about this book, and I was like, I care about this book too. Yeah, yeah. he's. I root he's, for him. He's sweet. He's silly. And he's very brave. Yeah, very brave. And he, mm -hmm. even when he's hunting, like trying to catch the goose, he's like, sorry, like it's not going to hurt too much. Like, yeah, yeah, he's not like, come here, you goose. And he goes, does that <laughs> hurt? No, he's I like, mean, I, he does it as fast as he can. I was waiting for them because I thought they were going to eat him. So then it was like, you're like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's just a squirrel. Did the goose survive the Vikings? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh! I was thinking, what happened to the pigs? Oh, oh no. Yeah, I was just going to say they got turned into breakfast. Uh, so then we have, uh, uh, you know, we have Ashling. Uh, I, here's what I wrote. I loved her, but I wanted more. I think that's yes. my biggest critique of the movie and like where you could add more is I felt like she wasn't given much to do and there was so much potential there. Like, she was very interesting. So that's why it's like, yeah, I'd love to see yeah. more, you know, because she's this playful, like, they did, because he's like, I know what you are, you're a fairy. And she's like, say it out loud, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, <laughs> they did a good job of making her, like, whimsical, but not too whimsical and not too, like, get out of my forest, you know, like, you yeah. she was charmed by brendan she was just like a she just was like this playful thing that he didn't get to experience in his regular life yeah and so i but i i wanted more of like why she wants to help him especially yeah. because she yeah. helps him a lot and he doesn't really do anything for her other than like he doesn't do out. shit for her like she they just no. hang out and i maybe that's what yeah. she needed but then you got to explain that you know yeah, yeah. so maybe I wanted in more of her in the montage, like we could have had instead of like a full montage or even before the montage, we could have had another moment of him going out and her like showing him stuff in the forest and him being like, so what happened to your people? You know, learn more, more about what happened. And so then they, that way he could be like, oh, well, you know, like that's happening all over, like mm -hmm. with my people and, you know, like. I should be like, okay, well, I want to help you. Like, yeah. So instead or, of it, like, right at that moment, we have a more of a build up. Or even, yeah, they her... didn't. Go ahead, Micah. Oh, no, I was just gonna say the fact that they just were like, you know, my parents were killed, and 
but then never covered that at all anywhere else and then didn't go into anything and they could have at least touched a little bit on the history or you know some kind of context about her so yeah. since she did the opening sequence <laughs> yeah like oh we're gonna learn all this stuff with, you know about throughout the ages I anything she and, was gonna be a protagonist yeah she or was a narrator stuff. or something she was big in that she's the poster and yes, when they yeah. did the Oscars, they had a section where they like interviewed the like characters like from the animated movies that were nominated, like a little and she was the representative of the movie. Interesting. So it's hmm. Here's what so it's like I just even just a scene where she you know, she could talk about her backstory or she could just be like, I love that you come visit me. I haven't had a friend in a long time. Yeah. And he yeah. maybe his there's a thing where the abbot is like, you can't go out, like you need to help with this thing tonight. And he leaves because she's lonely. Like maybe it's the anniversary of since she's been alone or just like she said, she was really lonely that day. So he wants to like give her a little present, like a little cookie or, you know, like. Yeah. Just like, I think, I wonder almost, especially because she comes goes looking for him. I feel like the mm-hmm. subtext was there that she was like, she wanted a friend. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I felt like it was like a runtime thing. Especially right. the animation is so expensive. You know, it was like, oh, we got to cut it down. Like, because maybe yeah. that could have been a thing where she finds out she's okay after the thing with Krom. Yeah. I, I thought, I just, I wish they kind of delved more into her being like, are you here to get food? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you got against him getting some food, though? <laughs> she's like, you're going to hurt my animal friends, you know? Are you going to... Yeah. Could have been some berries, but yeah. like the good kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, I just wanted more with her. Like what we had was good, but especially watching it, you know, like I've seen it a few times now. I'm kind of like, uh, what's going on with her? You know, and she helps him out a lot. And it's yeah, like, okay. usually you want to have more of a, a give or take. Uh, Brother Aiden is a fun mentor. Yeah. He's, uh, I still haven't figured out who he reminds me of, like the character design um but but yeah no he he felt he felt like weirdly familiar um but i like that he was encouraging brendan yeah to he saw talent he was encouraging him run me a little of not the playful side of gandalf or like a bit of merlin like that kind Mm -hmm. of wizard right um but he's definitely more Mm -hmm. grounded than merlin and more less serious than gandalf he's like in the middle right We'll have to, yeah. at some point, we need to make a chart of old guy mentors, like from Dumbledore <laughs> to like on one end. To... But, but he had his like serious moment when he was trying to talk with, you know, about the, um, how the Northmen were coming and like they yeah. needed to escape and he like just barely escaped and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we love him because he saved his cat. Yeah. Things were going yeah. wrong and he made sure that cat was okay. You know what he did? He did not care so much about that crystal. He let he didn't know it was gone until he was in the scriptorium, but that cat saved it. Mm-hmm. Saved Punker Bond. Punker Best we, character in the movie. Best, we love her. <laughs> we Stan. Uh yeah, we love her. Do we and the, the other monks are fun? Yeah. They're there. Yeah, they're fun. They add life. They add people we care about. So when there's an attack, it's upsetting, you know, because that's the thing with like the Black Cauldron, right? That we said, where we're like, are there anyone else? Is there anyone there's else? There's no in one else world? in that town. It's <laughs> just, it's just Taryn and that old guy he lives with, <laughs> and then all the animals that he abuses. So it's, it's like, okay. And then, then they legit, some of them die. So yeah. <laughs> Because we don't know what happens to anyone else, but we know that um, Brother Tang, because he puts them in a brother, yeah, door. he's the only yeah. one that we know survives. I think the other ones were in the chapel where they're praying, yeah. And they open the door, and it's like. But that once they have that scene, you know, where they're like they're sneaking over to the scriptorium to spy and like watch as Brendan, you know, is learning. Yeah. And stuff. And that was really cute. Yeah, because they're like, wow, he's really good. And it's really, it's really they were awesome so supportive. The, yeah, and they're like seeing the book come to life and stuff. They were really excited about that. Yeah, it's like they're they're very fun, creative, supportive people who are kind of in this thing where they have to like be building a wall, but that's not like what their that's what their job is. is. Like yeah. their their actual job they want to do is you know to 
to books. Yeah. To books. To books. <laughs> books <laughs> is a verb. <laughs> I want a books. <laughs> <laughs> and we have our antagonist. So our main antagonist is the abbot, right? Mm-hmm. He's not a villain. He's not right. evil, though he does lock a child in. And that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. You can't really. Pretty bad. Yeah, you can't. You Even can't in old that. times, that's bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where it was probably a lot more calm. Well, people yeah, are crazy was, now, yeah. but probably a lot more commonplace and people were more fine with it probably felt less guilty about it 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 wasn't even like i'm locking you in the room for the night it was till you change your mind like till you see reason yeah 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 but Uh, again we we kind of talked about a bunch that like he had a good point for doing what he was doing and trying to keep brennan focused and trying to keep that whole abby focused because like there's a very serious threat um and that's what he thought was the best thing to do because he was the leader of the community so yeah uh we we have the dark one chrome cool design very cool Mm -hmm. unexpected because i mean not that i would have had any like reference for what i thought that character would look like um but when it was happening it's like oh is this like the boss battle before the boss (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like this is just like one step is like oh no this is the boss battle okay okay um very cool very interesting i yeah i liked it more than if he was just like a dark lord kind of thing like a yeah. big dark, spooky guy i like that it was like a yeah snake thing yeah yeah because yeah, all you saw were the shadows and so it was kind of you weren't really sure what to expect <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. but then the fact that he defeated him by drawing it's like oh yeah cool. yeah exactly it's, it's almost a metaphor for like the whole like the book is turning darkness into light right like that yeah. writing and that was part of you know even uh, you know what people say like even if you're not you know religious something you can appreciate about this age in ireland is they were preserving knowledge and knowledge for yeah. knowledge's sake because they didn't just preserve religious texts they were preserving yeah. texts from other cultures stories of their own their culture you know, so it was like light in the dark ages, right? Like the act of writing, of preserving things that were being destroyed. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's why today, you know, you still have, you know, like pagans are celebrating uh, very Irish festivals, even when that's not like the focus of their faith. They're not like Irish reconstruction pagans. I mean, there are people that are that, but because that's something what we have, mm-hmm. other things were lost. Uh yeah, and the Vikings were spooky. They were spooky. <laughs> they're they're, they're horns and then they're mostly gold. just like shadow and like they have like yeah. just like balls of light for eyes. And that's kind of it. Very ring wraithy. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Um yeah, spooky. Very spooky. Mm-hmm. Very we just murdered a whole town of unarmed people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah um like giant horns yeah yeah i i wonder because i i was in high school when this movie came out because i'm like how would i have reacted as a child seeing that i can go test it on my kids if you want <laughs> <laughs> report report back. Back. traumatize uh, have, your children report back for tears. our podcast <laughs> Yeah, they are sleeping in the same bed as me tonight. Or <laughs> in my sleep. <laughs> yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the eulogy for my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so the themes of this film. Uh, we have the darkness, turning the darkness to light is kind of there. Mm-hmm. Hope. 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 That's 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 a I think hope that's... hope like true love that that one always is coming back. It's like yeah, you thought because... you forgot about me. Here I am. Because like that's kind of what every person in this movie, like their uh their drive is hope. Like he wants to turn the darkness to light. He and Brother Aiden, and then you know the Abbot. Like he's like I'm going to bring hope by building this wall by you know protecting, protecting my the community yeah. yes um that's supposed to give them hope that they're going to survive this you know mm-hmm. 
um, hope in their faith. Um, yeah, yeah. This, this idea that they're very motivated by their communities. Like, because even this, this movie is also about like art and the importance of art, you know, yes. to give people hope. Yeah. And, but it's also, it's art, you know, I'm not super familiar with everything in Rent, but you know, but like, we did not expect that one coming. But you know, a lot of stories <laughs> about like, like Rent, you know, stories about artists is kind of about like what art means for that artist individually. Right. And this isn't about Brendan. It's a form of expression for Brendan and what he's learned, but it's he, Bre- and it, Brendan, Aiden and Brendan are doing this because they want to do something for their community. Yeah. And for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because then I mean, that's what he does is he takes it around afterwards after it's done and he shows it off to different people, right? Yeah, so. he says it belongs to the people. You know, it was meant to be mm-hmm. shared. And I think that's the difference in a film or a piece of media between like the insufferable artist character and right. the artist character you like is it's like, what is their motivation? And it can be a mix of the two, but if it's only like, I want to express things for myself and I don't care like who I make watch it. Yeah. You know? Like the performance yeah. artist under that table and La Belle and La Beth. <laughs> yes. Well, I was thinking going back to Rent, um, Maureen's number uh, over the, the moon like is art, insufferable. Yeah. I love it, but it's insufferable. And I feel like would be insufferable if even if you lived in that world. But I mean, yeah, like it's, um, that is interesting. But like, yeah, he's doing this in a selfless way. Yeah. And Maureen just wants to, you know, get up there and moo. <laughs> kind of. But we love Adele Dazeem. Did do. you see that John Travolta is going to be uh, uh, presenting at the Oscars? I went, oof. Uh-oh. Who made that call? Why? He's the one know. that should have been banned. I don't care about the slap. But anyway. Chris so, Rock's okay. Um, by the time this comes out, we'll find out if he makes another Adele Dazeem slip up. Yeah, better be a celebrity because I, I didn't realize that I'd be talking about so much Adina Menzel in my on like public record, you know, on the internet and <laughs> podcast. So much in our podcasting <laughs> careers, we have talked about Adina Menzel many times. We're talking about her in a context in which she does not belong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's always coming up. Uh, but another theme I noticed, you know, kind of the the harmony of the, the Christian and the pagan in this movie, you know, mm-hmm. with, in the cat with the two eyes yes. in the culture. And it's also seen in like this nature as like a source of the divine that you yes. see God in nature. And that's why he uses nature in his art. And that was a thing that like that a lot of Irish prayers, like if you read like the breastplate of St. Patrick or whatever, there's a lot of references to the natural world and like the power of the natural world because that was so rooted in their culture. And mm. the idea that the natural world is good. And that was that was at the time a hot take for some people, you know, right. like for the Augustinian philosophy that was like, mm, mortal life is bad. Or you had the Stoics who was just kind of like, you, I don't know, there was a, later it was, the Albigensians, there's a lot of philosophy that was like spirit good, body bad. You know, like right. even yeah. like, and that trend is pretty big in Christianity, even though technically it's supposed to be like your body and your spirit are good. But like the Irish are very into like the natural world, like God is good, he made it good, and God's in nature. Mm-hmm. And that's very much from in their tradition, like their gods were like in nature and can they weren't on Mount Olympus above them, they were in the ground. Right. I thought it was interesting that the abbot, abbot, right? He um, there he didn't make any mention of it really. Um, you know, he was like, "Don't go beyond the walls because it's not safe." And I was kind of curious to see if it was going to tie into anything about wrestling, but it didn't. Um, but that would have been interesting to to hear what his thoughts were on it. Yeah. Yeah. You no. Know? Brendan is kind of scared because she's a fairy, but then he's like, "Oh, she's just kind of sassy." You know, he doesn't have any, like, oh, I need to keep you away, you know. And he's mm-hmm. a child, so he's not. But there, that's never, though, her existence is never set in conflict with the fact mm-hmm. that his, his mission is making a Bible, like a gospel Faith. book. Yeah. yeah. And, like, there's or- not even, 
it's just not even addressed as conflicting at all. So like the only conflict between those two ideas comes from us as the audience. Yeah. Well, yeah. even I feel like even other maybe in some other kind of movie, it would have been like him sneaking off to go into the woods to go hang out with her, whatever. Yeah. It would have been like to, the whole separation thing would have been to keep him from her. Yeah. But right. that's not what this was. It was just no, no it's not safe because there's Northmen out there and whatnot. Not even the wolves yeah. were an issue, really. Yeah. But it was just like that was more the just keeping him safe and then on task. It had nothing to do with what could be out there. Yeah. I mean, the 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 evil was not a, like Crom was a past evil, but the evil was human. Yeah, you know, uh, and it's you know the TikTok sound. It's from a song. I'm so sorry to the original song artist. Sorry to this man, uh, but it's uh, people always post. I'm not afraid of God. I'm afraid of man. Mm. And this kind of idea that like the natural world, the divine, you know, is like this very like positive force. And but like the evil, like because even the wolves when they attack are she just easily is like nope. But the evil comes from humans. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I did think it was interesting the way that they portrayed the wolves, like just just visually, right? Was just similar very, to the like, Vikings, kind of similar mm-hmm. to Vikings. So when they first popped out, it's like oh no, and then you know yeah. they listen to Mama Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I guess uh, that leads to our, what did, no, our, mm, I always get the order mixed up. We're going to ask our, our our titular question. Was that your fantasy? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I, With I, the I wing. <laughs> With, <laughs> no, I re- like, I, I, I grew up loving Irish folklore. I mean, just folklore and mythology in general um and Ireland specifically I've always really enjoyed so I really enjoyed this but I can't I also cannot help watching it with without thinking of Song of the Sea or anything like yeah. that, <laughs> which I also did enjoy so mm-hmm. do you think it's almost like like a Snow White where part of the magic is it started all these other movies mm-hmm yeah, that maybe because I mean I can definitely what they put down yeah, here. Yeah, I can watch this one and then see. Oh, now I can kind of understand how they came up with the story and everything for Song of the Sea and develop that. Um, I feel like that one was a little stronger. The story um, is tighter. Yeah. Yeah, um, but this one I thought was also just like visually, actually maybe a little bit more interesting. Um, and I like them both, but I did, I, I did enjoy watching this one. Seeing the world was really interesting and, and the story. And like, I, I'm aware of Book of Kells. Like I went to go see it specifically when we were in Dublin, you know, um, I'm a bookbinder though. So that's probably biased towards that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you books. I, I you books. books. <laughs> um, so but yeah, I mean, I think getting to kind of learn it from this aspect, um, you know, how historically accurate, you know, don't know, but it was really, I think it matters. No, it, it, no, it was really fun to see, you know? Yeah. I, this is definitely my fantasy. And if, if anyone who's listening can actually believe it, Hannah thinks that a, a movie that is about writing, you know, capturing a part of the Bible to preserve it is her fantasy. <laughs> Hell is freezing over. A lot twists are coming. It snowed in Burbank last weekend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> plot twist. Hannah's a Christian now. No. Uh, I. This is one of those movies that, like, again, I did not even know existed. And I, I loved it. I just thought, you know, and then also, like, learning the actual story behind it. But, like, even if I didn't know the story behind it, I still would have, like, recommended this to people. Because mm-hmm. the visual style, but also I think that the story is really effective. You know, obviously I knew they were monks and, you know, it had something to do with faith. Um, but I think also, like, the blend of, like, we were talking about, like, the the pagan culture and the uh, the actual Christian faith and how that's coming together. I just think it's just, like, a really beautiful telling of of just this aspect of the culture and I think it's really really cool um so yeah it was my fantasy yeah I mean uh you already know who I am as Topher uh, <laughs> I 
I I love this movie. It definitely is my fantasy. I think I think like you know this is my St. Patrick's Day movie because to mm. me it captures like his era and that era of Ireland like those few hundred years and just the, not yeah it's not about the historical accuracy it just captures the vibe the art the essence it's beautiful to look at it has a yeah. a, a, t- a touching story and cuz like otherwise what, what are people watching Darby O'Gill and the little people the 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 Disney Channel movie where the basketball player's mom is a leprechaun Luck of the Irish Luck of the Irish <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, or at best, Quiet Man, you know, with John Wayne. So it's kind of like, if someone's like, I want a movie for St. Patrick's Day, I would be like, watch this, because this captures the spirit of Irish culture and the holiday. And it was is made by Irish people, as opposed to those mm-hmm. other movies are all American or maybe Irish American. Yeah. I was going to say Leap Year, but I was like, no. <laughs> That's a different time. That's Leap Year. With Isla Fisher, right? I uh, No. Uh... Was, yeah, I think it's... It's not, or is it Amy Adams? It's Amy <laughs> Adams and Matthew Good. Matthew Good. <laughs> yeah. There was a uh, Andrea Core from the band The Cores was in some rom com, and I remember my sister was super into The Cores. So we were so excited. Oh, she's gonna be in this Irish I was super movie. Into the Cores. Yeah, we've talked about The Cores before uh, at work because it was like playing on the station. I was like The Cores, and you were like, the Cores. yeah. <laughs> but the I think it was like too raunchy, and my parents were like, no, we can't watch it um wow. yeah, but we we used to make home videos and we did one that was like a talk show and like my sister was the musical guest lip syncing a chorus song we need these home videos cullen mm-hmm. i've sold you, you this on glee you want to see me do an interview as a bionicle yeah <laughs> i would pay so much money to see that and by so much money i mean no money but or i would pay i would a couple dollars to get it converted into a, a watchable ratio yeah. you, know, you should just put it at the end of this one yeah <sighs> should you have a week the tim and brian <laughs> show yeah love it uh yeah so uh what did we learn today i learned so much i mean i learned what the book of kells was and again i have to reiterate i didn't need that to understand like the significance of you know this book you know i got it uh learned so much honestly because didn't know anything about that yeah i i think i think it was fun kind of talking it through and just recognizing like how beautiful the story was but like how simple and like it didn't need to be very complicated and it got that point across about all of those themes and just the characters and like i mean even just the fact that the bad guy wasn't really a bad guy you know the, the nuance of that was retained um, and they did it really well. Yeah, so a, a surprising amount of nuance for an animated children's film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Following a child. Yeah, a se- uh, like a hour and 15 minute movie. With beginning and end credits. <laughs> right, That's yeah. just, this is a, a very <laughs> simple watch. Also, I mean, depending on you know your state's laws, I may or may not recommend doing an edible before. <laughs> I feel like that would be really fun and I may try <laughs> or maybe microdosing some shrooms I don't know <laughs> yeah I think uh what I learned kind of from this discussion is yeah I think the simplicity you know especially after doing a fairly simple story that was made incredibly convoluted like the Beauty and the Beast remake and like yeah. just how long it took us to just recap that movie because a rage b like it was weird and this you, one you kept being like uh, we're okay we're past all the bad mistakes ah oh, shoot there's another bad mistake that they made in the movie so yeah yeah this is just like it's simple it's straightforward and it has the right amount it's like you want more but the magic and the like the fantastical of it like this fantastical sense of wonder is there enough for you to just be like okay there's a fairy in these woods there's a dark one but we're also in a historical setting you know, we're in this kind like it, it just has this, it, it's just filled with kind of this sense of like magic and hope yeah. in the face of darkness. Like it's not like a My Little Pony, like everything's rainbows. Like it's just like, yeah, but like the world is beautiful, but there's also Vikings. Okay. Very sound of music in that way. I always use that movie as an example of like strong contrast of like, right. there's a lot of goodness in the world as well as a lot mm-hmm. of evil. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's 
it's why it makes sense that hope was such a key point. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. hope she keeps coming back. You know, <laughs> Lord of the Rings, she was like my starring role, and she's been hanging out ever since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love her. Yeah. It's a great time. Uh, so, Michael, is there anything you would like to plug? <laughs> <laughs> not really no <laughs> <laughs> I'm good no, you can find no. me on Instagram at Michael Greenleaf <laughs> beautiful lots um, of great cosplay stuff oh not, what do you cosplay no yeah, just random things <laughs> yeah just like a lot of like if there's an opportunity for a fun maybe. outfit mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know yeah so not full not- on like I'm in a wig I'm at a convention but like yeah right. run fair labyrinth nice. ball yeah good time the labyrinth a ball dress oh my gosh yeah. that was cool ball. shout have, out have you seen labyrinth hannah are we gonna have <laughs> to talk about <laughs> labyrinth? The next one? <laughs> you, are we gonna have to talk about david Not bowie next. holding magical floating metal balls oh i mean let's talk about david bowie let's talk about it <laughs> like let's do it i'm here for it here's the thing i got i meant to get around to watching it Never did. Well, that's what we have. You have to invite me back on that one, right? (laughs) All right. You'll have to wear the gown. (laughs) And then I'll do some crazy makeup. I'll do I'll do David Bowie's makeup in that movie. Yes. Um Um, well, that's the end of our show. So I'm gonna do our little wrap up. Hello, YouTube watching us. Thank you. Uh leave us a comment. Smash Smash that that like like button. button. Trying to give the signal. Uh, like, mm-hmm. Can I get a smash that like button? <laughs> um, so also subscribe to our channel. It really helps us. Um, and then it doesn't matter where you're watching or listening. Definitely head over to Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. Let us know what you love. Uh, what's going to be our question to leave in the comments? Uh, watch this movie. Tell us what you think. You just yeah. got to do it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty so cheap good. rent. You know, yeah. like it's like one ninety nine, two ninety nine, like one. It was like what two ninety nine on YouTube. You could literally watch if you're watching this. Search the Secret of Kells and watch it. Yeah, I mean, and it's then, it's a good good watch for sure. You have to you have to tell us if Pangerbon is your favorite cat ever. <gasps> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to rank fantasy have to rank. animals. Cats. We'll have to do because we've done horses. We'll have to do oh. cat. We did horses from Disney movies. Oh right, we did. I so did I was gonna say we could compare um, Henwin and Pangerbon. Oh, similar oh. vibes. Similar vibes. I mean, I don't know what I would pick. Yeah, that's a tough <laughs> I don't one. Don't know. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah, so... if it was their masters, we know, but like. <laughs> but yeah, so um, and then also you can hit us up on Instagram and TikTok. We are at Not My Fantasy Pod. Pod. Yes. Uh um answer and make sure to follow because i do polls and like each week a movie advances and return of the king beat beauty and the beast animated and i'm kind of like that was my biggest thing of like that was like this is going to be a tight one uh so i don't know if anything will be return of the king this season anything i we have planned in the works we'll see everyone needs to go and watch this movie and then perhaps they might be like you know what we're going to give Ponger Bon, Brendan, Brother Aiden, the other Ashling. brothers of the monastery, Ashling. We're going to give them the bump because Especially, they, they deserve it. Because listen, Return of the King won like a thousand Oscars. Oscars. Okay. They and, have the notoriety. And this the movie vibes is, are different, though. This movie, <laughs> true. <laughs> the vibes are very different. But this movie pulled off a lot in like a little over an hour. It did. Yeah. yeah. And which again, did hope better. <laughs> which did hope better yeah listen it takes three whole movies to convey hope for that last movie to really pop off it's true less like less than 90 minutes less than 75 minutes 75 minutes. but again super easy watch definitely would recommend watching it um maybe not with young children though because the viking yeah. stuff it's kind of scary yeah it's not pg-13 yeah. i would say PG no eight. no yeah PGA, have, 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 yeah. have a parent with you, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're obviously talking to children. We're not we're talking to children. Uh, adults, just yeah. make sure you're there when your children are watching it. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you, Michael, so much for being so here. Much fun. Thanks for having me. It was great. Love to yeah. be back to the labyrinth and make that happen for you. <laughs> right, next, we'll, we'll work in next season, hopefully. Yeah, what there's is, so many movies that we like. So oh, I think to talk about this. What yeah. is happening next episode, Cullen? Because I actually don't know. <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna take a little trip south to Italy. <gasps> Italy, we're, my people, your people, your people, and your magical wooden puppet boy. Maybe we'll, oh, wait, wait. Maybe we're gonna talk about my dad. Famous Italian. Famous Helen's Italian. My dad, William Callahan. Oh. <laughs> also like, not wait. Italian. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? I recently told that story to my sister in law about how you're Guillermo del Toro's son. Yeah. Yeah. It it pops off every time I tell somebody. <laughs> People love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tune in next time uh, for some sunny Italian shores. And... But not Polly Shore yet. Mm. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.